Well, well, well. Good evening, everybody. I hope you can hear me fine. Um, but I guess so. And uh, yeah, well, I'm back and living. I don't know. Um, some of you might have uh, heard that last week I was knocked off. I'm still not back in uh, absolute 100% shape, but well, um, sadly, I had to skip last week's episode, but I'm actually really happy that this uh, show tonight works out as this is a special show. Usually uh, we have a 14 day turn of uh, events and shows that uh, are paid by like a minimum of 10 euros. And uh, when I heard that uh, Bastian and his team are going to release Kirby 3.5 today, I thought like, well, let's do a live stream and do uh, a feature like a show and tell um, on this platform on Vito. And um, I'm actually quite happy. We are like more than, let me check, 143 people right now. Uh, are participating, um, which is which is crazy, wonderful, and I, I, I also checked the um, the kind of country list where people are coming from, which, which is amazing. I mean, it's like U.S., Belgium, Netherlands, France, Bavaria, Italy, Turkey. So cool, crazy, really. Uh, Brazil even, and uh, uh, oh, Bavaria also, um, <laughs> but. Um, well, it, it's it's crazy, and we also have someone who has got birthday. Uh, I hope I pronounced the name right. Ahmed, is that correct? You have birthday. Happy yeah, birthday, I say. And, and it's it's thirty uh, fifth birthday, so uh, the best really? coincidence ah, ever. He, like three point five, thirty five. He, he was waiting for that. He was waiting for that. Yeah. Only for only for him, we 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 we're going to do this show exactly today. Um, yeah. As you have um, just experienced, uh, this is uh, Toby, also known as Baldova, who is uh, usually playing live at Beyond Tellerant. And he agreed to come and join us tonight and uh, to play some tunes up front, but also in the break that we're going to have right after um, Basti is uh, finished with his presentation. Uh, in the presentation, I hope um, we're going to find out for those of you, which might be not too many, um, who don't know about Kirby, what Kirby actually is. Maybe just a really, really quick, this is Kirby. And then of course, we are all looking forward to see what the new features are in 3.5. Uh, I had the pleasure of uh, Bastian uh, introducing me to everything that's new yesterday, or not everything, but like the bigger parts of it, uh, as there's a lot of stuff under the hood and smaller improvements where I think uh, they're important to, to Basti and the team. Um, to reach new audiences, I have to say, really, uh, like the two-factor authentication um, or um, uh, also like the, the uh, layout fields, for example, because um, it, it just opens a complete new world to, to people who, who by now might have said like, oh, Kirby is just like too much like fiddling around for me. So I need something where I have to, the ability to, to plug my stuff together, to just drag and drop stuff around and see more closely what I get in the end. Um, uh, but I don't want to take uh, You're spoiling everything, and <laughs> spoiling too much of it. I'm just too excited. Sorry. <laughs> but um, I at least gave my best to match the Kirby colors here, like the green and the orange of the color palette that Bastian sent me. Yeah, I, 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 got even lit some, I even lit some candles, <sighs> like real candles. I mean, like fire and stuff. You make my my uh, setup look so bad, but that's totally fine. I mean, you are the pro. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I guess this is enough of me talking. You want to see Basti and you want to hear about what's new in Kirby. So Basti, your stage. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Your time. I'm, and I'm, if I have quick questions and like uh, throw in some stuff, I hope it's, it's cool to interrupt you to get some interactivity here and just to, to ask some stuff if I don't understand and it might be much but maybe every <laughs> time or something <laughs> yeah that would be cool i mean also uh i i wrote it in the chat and you wrote it before um if you find questions during the, de uh, the, the demonstration or right now just put them in the question section in the in the sidebar you can find the question section under conversations or what is it i, I can't see the chat right um, now yeah and then it's just yeah, that's correct place them there and we try to pick them up later right so um get back to them exactly if, if you can 
Uh, but I want to start with a huge thank you. I mean, Mark, this is uh, really, really cool for me. And um, for those who don't know, like the background of, of us two. Um, so I go to your event for like the last 10 years. I think I, I have been to every event except two. And um, my, my excuse is that those two have been happening right after, right before um, the birth of my two boys. So I think that's quite a good excuse that I skipped those. Um, and it's just a really, really great conference. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we so probably sound like um, crappy cross uh, promoters here. We're like, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, over the years, we really got great friends and um, met there so many times. And whenever I come back to Beyond Telerand, it's just like, yeah, coming back to the family. And it's super, super sad that um, this year they you had to skip them. And yeah. it's even more special that you invited me to to the digital version of it. And I think you're making a really Always great- a pleasure. Yeah, I think you're doing a really great job with turning that Thank into you. nice evenings um, and yeah, giving your best to yeah, to make the best Thank out you. of the situation. So, and I but mean- enough now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the, the, the good thing for us is we, we couldn't have done this um, normally. Yes. So live streaming is, we, we did live streams for um, while we've been working on Kirby 3 and um, that worked out, out quite well, but the setting is completely different here, and I really enjoy it that it's more personal. And I hope yeah, the, the, the our people here will enjoy it too. And I'm also super happy that Toby is here and making music. Yes, absolutely. That's very it's special great. as well. Okay, um, but I guess um, that's it. Enough also, praise just, for you. Just, yeah, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. I mean, honestly, uh, just w one quick throw in here. Um, Every time Basti and I like speak about what we do to each other, like me yeah. about my events and he about his um, his product in a way, um, we always find there's like so much overlap in how we run the business we run and also uh, how the community that was built or, or that is built around uh, like Kirby or Beyond Tellerrand uh, are acting and are like from from their passion and their the way they act and stuff. And I think that's that's wonderful. And I, I mean, I see from like the the completely new faces on on, on here um how how much f like uh, like like how do you say like how much how, how much passion the, the people have got that mm. i see hanging out on discord and and yeah. slack uh before but we will get to this part later and um now i i think it's time to just kick off and yeah. see what, what's new That's that's good. So I start sharing my screen I, and then I'm just yes. trying to demo a few things. First, I'm super excited about this release. And I guess you already saw my excitement on Twitter and on Discord. And I mean, in our opinion, for the entire team, we, we agree that this is probably the, the biggest release for Kirby since Kirby 3. I mean, there's so much in this release. And as Mark already said, things that hopefully yeah, open new doors for new projects and um, yeah hopefully make your life as developer and designer easier and um quick you wanted me to make a quick introduction to kirby right i, I have no idea how many um, people are in here with uh, who never um yeah tried kirby before never heard about kirby before so kirby is a file-based content management system um it's not a static site generator it's um dynamically loading content from files and folders so basically, when you have a look at my setup here, and this is the Kirby installation, then we have a content folder instead of a database and every page and every data that we pull into our site comes from this folder. So we have folders and subfolders. And within those folders, we have images and PDFs and all kinds of other files that you want to place in there and link on the page. And we also have a text file that contains all the, the content for that page. So all the kind of, kind of fields that you need to work with later in your templates. So that's a very basic run through of how the file-based system works. And on top of that, so that's one thing that you can just use and um, build your sites with, and you never really have to touch your browser um, at all working like this. You could just create folders and subfolders and text files, and then you can build a site like that. But um, on top of that, we also have an, an admin interface, which looks like this. So this is our Kirby panel. And this is basically a wrapper around the same thing. So it's whenever we do stuff here in the panel, when we upload images or edit content or drag uh, pages around, 
um, resort them, whatever. Uh, yeah, everything is just done for us on the file system as well. So this is just doing the same things and it can all work in, in both ways. So you can um, change things here and then you can see that it also ch changed here. So the sorting changes on the file system. It's kind of the, the magic part about it. You can see now it changed around and it's doing that for us. So this is the, the layer that is helping people who don't want to mess with files and folders to get along with Kirby. Um, so yeah, what's, what's new in Kirby 3? I mean, uh, 3.5, that's, that's what we are here for, I guess. At least I am here for, for it. And maybe let's start with something that might be not that spectacular on the first side, but we completely over, um, overhauled the starter kit. So that's the kind of introduction that you get when you download Kirby for the first time. You probably want to start with the starter kit. That's kind of our demo installation where you can test different things and you have inline documentation in templates and in blueprints and everywhere else that tries to help you explain features before you start using it, using it. And you get some demo content like some images and some blog articles and a little about page. And so the starter kit design has been completely overhauled. There is new content in there. There is new um, blueprint setups in there. Um, adjusted to the fields that we come up with or that we came up with for this release. So you can instantly get started with a new blocks field and a layout, layout field that I'm going to show you. And I'm also going to use this for this demonstration. We also adjusted our demo kit. That's the second one. So whenever you don't want to install Kirby locally before you try it, um, you just want to click around and see how the panel works and just want to get an idea of how it feels you can go to our website slash try, and then you can also run an, an online um, instance there, an online demo instance there. And also this has been completely um, redone and the blocks field is in there as well. And the layout field is in there as well. And a couple other um, adjustments are in there as well. So that's kind of the, the things to get started. So when you want to play with a 3.5 for the first time, maybe this is a good idea to get started with a starter kit. And as I said, I also I will also use it today to demonstrate what um, is new and what might be exciting for you. And I'm going to start with the blocks field. And yeah, I'm super excited about this. Um, the blocks field is kind of a missing link for Kirby. I mean, there have been plugins that solve this kind of issue that the, the field is solving, but now it's coming to the core. And I'm just going to demonstrate what it does. So let's start with a new page here with a new blog article. I'm creating a draft here and I'm going to quickly upload. I can't see it. <laughs> I'm going to upload a cover just quickly. So now we have set up um, a basic article. I have to find out how I can close this little sidebar here. Okay, because it's hiding UI elements in Zoom. You can't really see this in my uh, when in, in the screen sharing, I guess, but it's getting on my nerves here. Okay, so this should work. So uh, yeah, this is a blocks field. Um, it's empty as you can see. So now let's get started. The idea behind the blocks field is that we um, we've always been asked about a what you see is what you get editor as um, yeah, becoming a part of the core of Kirby. And we have been super hesitant about that. Those of you who have been following Kirby over the last years, um, you know that the core has always been very slimmed down. And our philosophy or kind of philosophy is that we try not to, to put too much stuff into the core and keep it yeah, simple and clean. And then rather solve stuff um, with plug and plugins. But this request that um, users need more than just a markdown field to, to edit their content or want something that is a bit more intuitive than a markdown, markdown field has been going on forever, basically. And then last year, we introduced a field called editor, a plugin which kind of solved this. But this is kind of now coming to the core. And so this is all, this is what it's all about. So with blocks, you start yeah, arranging blocks and content blocks. So for example, we start with a heading and then we can add maybe some text below it. And then maybe 
an image. And so the blocks that you see here right now, those are the default blocks that come with the system. So we, we just introduced a couple default blocks that we think might be useful and that you can use out of the box without even setting anything up. Uh, um, anything up. And the basic idea of blocks is that we have a very visual way of editing those. So you get like a, what you see is what you get feeling with those blocks and you can drag them around and you can duplicate fields and you can change the type and maybe make this a quote. And, um, and so on and so on. And so you just arrange, you, you can create long form rich texts by just putting blocks below each other. So that's kind of the basic idea behind it. But the important part is that everything that you store is stored in a structured way. So it's not just placing HTML in, or like a big um, blob of HTML into um, our content files. It's all structured and everything, every setting and every part of each block can be adjusted later and can be configured. And that's kind of the important part about it because in the end, what's difficult about what you see is what you get fields or editors is that you often lose control. So it's a balance between um, giving too much control to your editors or not giving any control to your editors. And we try to solve it with this box field. So everything that you see here is completely configurable. You can say, okay, we don't want to um, provide a bold format in headline blocks, or we don't want underlined um, an underlined option in headline box. So you can switch on inline, uh, switch on and off inline formats here. You can um, set which kind of block types you want to allow or you don't want to allow. So maybe this is something I want to show you next. So the block field is set up in our blueprints. So blueprints, for those of you who've never worked with Kirby, they are the configuration files for the admin interface. They are basically building all the features that you need for each page type. And in this case, for our notes, for our blog articles, I call them notes to be a bit more fancy. Um, here's our blocks field. And as, as you can see here um, in its default configuration, it's giving you all those default blocks that you've seen. Um, you can select all of those. But if you don't want all of those, maybe you don't want to allow to add videos to it, you can then select the core fields or the core block types that you want to support. So for example, you want only want some headings and some text and some quotes, quotes and an image block. Um, and when we reload this, you can, will now see that the that I made a typo, first typo of the day. So I promised the one who asked if this is the typo three demonstration that I made make at least three typos, so that's typo one. Um, so now we have a, a limited list of options here for, for new blocks, which of course is super um, important in, in many cases when you say, okay, I have a sidebar and I want to fill it with content, but I don't really want videos to turn up there or I don't want to um, even have block quotes in there. Maybe you just want to have text blocks in there. So that's a way how you can restrict that. And you also can um, restrict, as I said, the inline formats for each block type. Um, and the structure part of it is extremely important when it comes to templating, because that's kind of the, the pain when you work with um, like the standard, uh, what you see is what you get editors, you just have um, HTML stored in your backend, and then you somehow have to live with that, whatever kind of HTML that is. And in the worst scenario, um, yes, your editors made some poor choices and maybe made the headlines red, or um, there's some content coming in from Word and um, yeah, it's pasting formats all over the place. So that's kind of the worst case scenarios with, with those, um, what you see is what you get editors. And that's what we are trying to solve here. So when I open this, the preview of this, you can see this is what's being rendered by default. And that's kind of what we make as a suggestion for our default blocks. So every default block comes with um, default HTML that you can use or not use. Um, and if you don't want to use that, if you say, okay, I, I need some special control over how those headlines are rendered in my HTML. By default, it's just a simple um, H1 element and it's nothing, nothing really fancy. Okay, I'm, I'm 
pulled in, um, selecting the wrong, wrong one, but you get the idea. Um, but it, maybe you need to assign a custom class to your headlines, or maybe you want to um, yeah, make some adjustments to the way that images are rendered in those blocks. Um, you can easily do that and override our default blocks. And this is done in snippets. So snippets are, um, in another system, they are called partials. In our system, it's, they are called snippets. They are basically reusable, tiny parts of templates that you can yeah, use over and over again. And for snippets, in this case, we have new blocks folder block subfolder and then in your block, block subfolder you can uh, create new snippets for um, blocks that you want to override and you can see i already um, made some adjustments to the image block here and to the video block and i'm going to make an adjustment to the text block in this case so i create a text php snippet and then in here i have access to a block object and from the block object i can access all the fields from that particular block. So that's very much like you would handle um, all the other fields in Kirby as well in your templates. Um, it, with blocks, it works the same way. So blocks have their own fields um, and you can look them up in the, uh, in the documentation for the default blocks that we provide. And now this would be exactly the same thing that our default block does. It just renders the, the content of that text block. The text block is probably the most basic one. So nothing really changes at this point. But of course, now we can make all sorts of adjustments. Like maybe we want to put in some utilities here. Maybe we want to make the text bigger. Maybe we go back to the, to the, uh, to the past and work with style attributes. You shouldn't do this, but it's so convenient for this demo. Um, and I make the terrible design choice here to make all text blocks red. And so now we instantly have um, overwritten our text blocks and, and made sure that all text blocks render in red. Whoever thought that this would be a good idea, but this is just to show you how easy it is to adjust those. So you can work with margins, you can work with custom formats. Maybe you want to provide some additional um, features to uh, let your images float or put them to the side or have some kind of margin uh, on the left or on the right with some additional information to it. So all of this can be done by just creating those snippets and then putting a little bit of HTML into those snippets and overriding the block style. And I think this is in, ge in general, uh, like a really nice way of getting control over such text blocks. Normally text blocks, you would, even when you use markdown, um, you're limited to a certain kind of um, yeah, sets of elements. But even then you can make mistakes or if you want to have finer control over images or over videos or anything else that you want to embed there, it's getting much harder. So let's revert my terrible design mistakes here. Let's just kill this text block. We don't really need it. Um, where was I? Snippets. So let's delete this again. Okay, so those are the default blocks. And of course you can create your own, uh, your own block types. And I mean, this is kind of where this um, new field really has its strength in my opinion. Um, the default blocks are nice and they solve a lot of issues, but many times you would probably run into a situation where you say, ah, I, I want to have like an O embed feature in my long form text, or I need some kind of special product placement there, or maybe like a call to action button or like typical things that you want to put in, in such long form text. And for this demo, I'm going to use Mark as an example. So Mark is running a conference. He has a conference website. Um, he's trying to make his best to promote his speakers and yeah, the talks that are coming up. So in this, in this case, when he's writing a blog article, he probably at some point wants to promote a speaker. So in this demo, I'm going to build a speaker blog for Mark. And you can get started as easy as it gets by going to your blueprints folder, creating a new blocks subfolder. And then in that subfolder, I'm going to take my sidebar, it's so much easier. Um, oh, I delete this. This is still left for my preparations. Very professional. Oh, no, it's not there. Weird. So 
It's just acting up as it looks. What the hell? I can't open this. Bear with me for a second. I don't know what's going on here. Let's make it like this. So I created a new YAML file. Is this working now? Okay, so VS Code is totally acting up here. So now I have a new um, YAML file in which I can define this new block type that I'm currently working on. And it starts as easy as defining a name for the block type, which will then later turn up in my selector for the block. So I call it speaker. And then I can give it a, a, a nice icon if I want. So we have a set of icons for the panel that you can use for your fields, for your sections, for um, the blocks here. And they are all listed in the docs. You can just leave it away. It still looks good, but um, this is just a nice a little extra bonus. And then um, the most important part comes here, and those are the fields. So now I can define the fields that should be available for my speaker block. And I need a name field, which should be of type text. And I need a website field, which should be of type URL. And maybe I need an image field, because I also want to upload an image for the speaker. So now I have a basic setup for my speaker block. And as soon as I've installed this, and I can use it here. So now I can put it here. And by the way, this is also um, determining the sorting, how fields or how block types are turning up in the selector. So if you feel like the text block is the most important one, you can put it first, or then you can, otherwise you can put it second or whatever. So if this is now working as expected, we should be able to create a new speaker block right in our block, a set of blocks. I should have deleted some of my preparations here. Okay, so this is how the block looks like in the beginning. So I have a simple block. Um, it's, it's giving me the name, it's giving me the icon that I specified. And um, if I want to edit, I click on it and I get to this nice little drawer. And now I can adjust all the settings for that speaker and can put in some information, upload a nice image for him. Don't have one, take one of the, whatever, doesn't really matter. So this is like the basic um, custom block that I can create. So I have upload, um, I have full control over the fields that I'm adding here. And I can add as, add as many fields as I want. I can even add tabs if it's not enough. If I have a, like a really complex block, I can even put tabs up here. Um, I'm not getting to this in this demo, but you can look it up in the de uh, documentation. So you can cre create like really complex um, custom blocks for with additional settings and styling options and whatever you need for your, your site. But with this simple block, what we can do now is we can create a custom snippet for it. Uh, that would be like the next step. So now we have our speaker block in our list of blocks. And when we open the page again, um, it doesn't turn up. So it's just an empty block. It doesn't really give us any HTML. So very much like we overwrote the uh, image snippet before, um, we can now go back to our snippets folder and create a new um, speaker folder, uh, speaker file. And in that speaker file, we now have access to all the fields that we just created in the same way that I showed you before. So we have the block object. And from there on, we can access the name, we can access the website. I'm, I'm really keeping it simple here. We could, we could also access the image with a little extra help here. Um, and then I should get my speaker block. There is no HTML yet, there's no CSS yet. I still have to work on that, but um, you already see how easy it is to pull in this information into your templates, into your list of blocks. And from there on, everything is just sortable. You can move this thing around, you can add additional speakers, you can duplicate it just with all the other block blocks and all the other features that I just showed you. Um, so, of course, compared to our other blocks, this looks a bit, um, yeah, a bit bland. It's, it's, it's just a generic block type so far, and we only see the icon and the speaker label here. 
um, or the speaker, the, the block name here. So we can make it a bit more fancy. So as a first step, if I want to spend, if I don't want to spend too much time on um, custom block types, but I want to give a bit more information about what the content of that block is, I can adjust the label or I can introduce an additional label. And the label is a subtext that comes after the, the block name and that I can fill with um, content or with, with dynamic content coming from my fields. And there is a very simple template syntax for this. So for example, this would just render the name that we type in into the name field. Let's have a look how that looks like. So now I get the name of the speaker and this is also already super useful because now if I have multiple speakers, I can see multiple speaker names. I could also pull in the, the website there. And when I type something, uh, then the, the name automatically updates and I can all instantly see a preview of it. But still compared to the other block types, um, yeah, it's still, it could be, it could be more awesome, right? So um, we also uh, introduced a plugin extension for block types. So when you say, okay, I need this block type so often, I have a custom gallery block type, or I, I want to make those speaker blocks look nicer, or maybe in a company, um, we have a shop and we want to include products in our um, blog articles, and we want some really shiny, Block, um, product previews there for our editors before they launch something, um, you can build simple plugins for that. And we have documented the, the workflow, how to create those plugins. So you can start very simple by just creating um, simple templates for them. And um, that's basically just HTML and then put some CSS on top of that. Or you could, could extend that to um, a full Blown Vue.js component. So our backend is built with Vue.js and you can introduce your own Vue.js components that render those previews and even make them interactive. So if you say, okay, I, I want a, what you see is what you get editing experience for my speaker block, I can actually do that. And I'm, I'm cutting short here, or not I'm cutting short, I'm, um, I'm taking a shortcut here and I already pre paired this plugin and I'm going to install it. That's kind of what you saw before. So now if all works as expected, I have a yeah rather nice little preview of my speaker block. And it's even an inline editing block. So now I can start changing the website here and I can change the name here. And I can do that right directly in my list of blocks. And I can duplicate that and add multiple of those and put more speakers in there really quickly. And still, if I need to make additional adjustments, I can go back to my drawer and make adjustments there, um, change my fields, put more fields in there, have fields in there which are not even visible here, but just act as additional settings for a block. All of this is now super, super easy to create. Um, I don't want to go too far into detail about how to create those blocks. As I said, we have documented that, but you can see this is all the code that is needed to create that block preview. So it's just written in plain JS here. It's, um, you can put your um, block types or you can create your block types with um, view components or you can create it with this simple um, plain JS, which is just basically creating the, the HTML template um, and then using the, the same fields that we used before to render those fields, have those inputs here. And whenever the content of those input changes, um, uh, the block content is updated and yeah, the inline editing works like this. So all of this plus a little bit of CSS is needed to create such block types. And of course, block types are reusable. You can use them in your other, system, uh, in your other projects. You can um, launch them as standalone plugins for other people to use when they are useful for other projects as well. So all of this is, of course, possible. And with this combination, I mean, those of you who have been following Kirby for a longer time and who no, maybe know the editor plugin as well, and also might have uh, worked with the builder plugin before, lots of this uh, stuff might uh, be very familiar to you. And that's kind of on purpose. So our idea with this field was to merge the best of both worlds, the, the, block uh, the 
builder field by Tim, which has been a, a fantastic field to create such modular content over the years. Um, but at the same time, make it as visual and easy to edit and um, move stuff around as in our editor field and give this like long form um, writing experience at the same time have the modular way to extend blocks, write your own blocks. And yeah, we, we really hope that we can get the best of those two fields in this field or got those. And um, yeah, they, we, I've, I, we have been developing this a long time together with, with a lot of people in the community and on, on Discord. And I've already seen some incredible custom block types that people created. And you should really uh, check them out later in, in Discord and just scroll up a bit in our blocks channel there and just see what others build. And it's, it's really, really cool. So it's really nice to extend that. Whew, I'm going to take a quick break and have a sip. A question from the off. Um, yeah. You mentioned that there, there are already like so many custom uh, uh, block types and block fields. Um, is there any, or is there any kind of like directory planned, like a plugins directory or a theme directory for, for those? Yeah, for definitely. Fields? Yeah. So cool. they should, they should definitely go into our plugin directory. We are also, we also have quite some, some plans to extend that finally make it easier to browse but yeah the blocks should definitely go there so whenever some of you should already have prepared something that could be shared by with, with other users please please let us know and we put it on the website as soon as we can ace okay okay cool. so that's the the first one and i think it's a it's a yeah it's a milestone for us to have this in the in the core it, it solves so many things and i really hope you like it based on that I want to show you the next thing, and that is our new layouts field. And the layouts field is kind of um, the bigger sister, brother, whatever of the blocks field. So many of you have used the builder in the past and the builder plugin, as I said before, was a very modular way of creating microsites, or things that go in the direction of microsites or complex page layouts. So think about something like a hero and galleries and grids and uh, yeah, multi-column text and the stuff that is quite hard to do right and give your editors a good editing experience for. And the builder has been doing a really great job with that. But what we also saw was that um, in the builder, many people used nested builder instances. And for those of you who've never used that, it's a bit abstract at this point, but it's basically a builder within a builder within a builder. So you could do some stuff like nested column setups and, and things like that. And it, it got to a very extreme degree sometimes. And we wanted to offer a, a way to create such microsite layouts or such complex page layouts in a, also in a more um, enjoyable way or maybe in a more intuitive way in the end without having to nest fields so deeply. So this is where the layout fields comes in. And the layout field looks like this. So what you get here is a wrapper basically around our blocks. So the layout field introduces different kinds of layouts. So um, one singular column layouts, uh, three column layouts, two column layouts, whatever kind of layouts you need. And then within them, those are just blocks again. So that's basically the same thing as we've seen in the blocks field. So you have an image block, you have a heading block here and a text block here and a heading block and a text block, quote block, text block, etc. And very much like in the blocks field, you can create new blocks afterwards, add a quote block, add another video block and combine different blocks with different layouts and um, yeah, do all kinds of cool things. And you can also move them around. So for example, um, if you say, okay, what's magazine uh, should go here then you can move it up here and or over here. And then you can also change the, the blocks like this. So it gets very um, designy at some point, but still with the same structured content in the background. So still everything is stored as structured data in JSON in this case, and still everything is very much controllable in your front end, how you want to render the HTML for this. So we, that's kind of, very important part of our philosophy that we never really want to give you any kind of 
um, predefined um, HTML or predefined CSS that you have to use in the way that we imagine you should use it. Um, we, we want to avoid CM CMS smell at all costs. You should never really be able to see that it's a curvy site um, if you don't want to. And yeah, so we have this um, this layouts field here and I already set up like a couple of layouts as I already mentioned. So when we want to create some new stuff here, we can say in a similar way as before, we can go in here and then say, okay, we need another two column block and then it goes below that or we need another three column block. And then we can move those around of course and say, okay, now this should go up there and this should go down there. Um, just start yeah, like playing around with different options here. You can duplicate things, which is great if you want to build such multiple um, yeah, multiple things in the same way. So for example, if I would need a grid of lots of those typical blocks where you introduce features, you could do this in a second, uh, move them around again. But most importantly, it's working in the same way as with blocks. You can tell the field what kind of layouts you need. So every project is different. Every project has a different kind of grid set or, um, or grid system. Every project might have like completely different requirements. So it doesn't make sense for us to, to force you into certain kind of grid systems or um, predefined columns. Um, this is for the starter kit. So this is why we have this predefined stuff in there. But if I go to the about page now, you can see, wait a second, this is my layout setup. And as you can see here, we can define those layouts that are available. So here we have the single column layout, um, then we have like the two columns and then we have the three columns. And of course we can add our own ones. So let's say I want to have a layout that has a one third column and a two third column. And then this would be it, could change the thing around to provide the opposite and then reload it and then add it at wherever I want. So now I have my new lay layout set up here and I can fill it with content. I could fill an image here and I could fill in um, another quote here because quotes are so cool. Um, and this is, this is kind of how we think about layouts. So when we when I speak about layouts, like I consider this a layout and this a layout or a layout section if you want. And we, we think in those sections and you can drag sections around and um, those sections are later the things that you can control in your HTML and say, okay, how I want to, to make sure that every section is, is um, designed in, the, in exactly the same way that, that I want it to be designed. Um, and this can be simple like this. It could also be super complex. So you could also say, I have complex section types, something like where I start with a single column, but then, um, so I don't have to fill in just the 100% the here. I can do all kinds of combinations and have them in a single layout, in a single layout section. And this is, getting interesting when you say, okay, I need more control over how those things look in the end. So now I have a complex setup layout, uh, layout setup, I can fill this again with my blocks, but it's a single section. And when I get to the templating, um, you will see why this makes sense. Okay, so now we have created our layouts and let me show you how the, the templating for this looks. I have put this into a little snippet itself to yeah, to make it easier for you to scan. So this is the, the layout script that we are using or the layout setup that we are using. And you can see it's using the two layouts methods. So that is just breaking it down into single uh, layout sections. And then we can have those nest nested for each loops. So with the first for each loop, we create a section for every layout section. So this would be one this would be one, this would be one, et cetera, et cetera. And then within the layout, we have uh, a method called columns. And with columns, we can access the columns of that particular section and then loop through that again. And so we define the columns here. And then within those, 
uh, columns, we can access the blocks. And that's the same thing that we did before. So we can then render the, the result of the blocks that are in no, those columns. And if we want to get even more control over that, we could even loop through those blocks one more time. So I have another level on, of nesting here and then render each particular block in a particular way, wrap it with another diff or um, customize each snippet for each block within a layout and have different snippets for blocks in layouts than we have in our blocks field. So it gets like, it can get very, very complex and very detailed about the work that you're doing on those layouts. Um, what you are seeing here is also, again, just our suggestion how you could write your HTML. So we, are, have, we have a 12 column CSS grid based grid that we're using here. Um, we modify it a bit with uh, such style, um, such um, CSS variable um, overrides and the same thing here with the columns. But again, this is 100% adjustable to whatever you use. Maybe you have a, your own CSS framework, maybe you use Tailwind or Bootstrap or I don't know, whatever um, CSS grid system works best for you. And then you just have to um, adjust the CSS classes that you're using here in your sections to create your sections, to create your grids, to create your columns. And that's basically it. Um, so again, a lot of control over how you render that stuff. And when we talk about such complex layouts, we often get to the point where we say, okay, ah, yeah, the first one. So that's my, let's say that would be the typical hero block here. Um, we, I want to have, um, I want to control the background. I want, I want the background of this one to be black and I want this block to be full, a full width block. Uh, maybe I have an additional margin setting that should go below the block. I, I don't know, like the, all the kind of stuff that you normally have to solve in such situations. Um, so what we can do as well is we can introduce layout settings. Let me go back to my YAML file here. And there's a settings option for the layouts field, for the layout field. And within my settings layout, I can now define custom fields that I need for every layout. So now I could say, I want to control the background color. And the background color should be controlled with a simple select box. And as options, I want red, green, and maybe blue. I'm obviously a fantastic designer um, with great taste, as you can tell. Um, and now I can, as you can see, this new button turned up here. So this is my little setting button. And this is now available on every layout section that is in my grid here. And now I can click on it and I get the same drawer that I got for the blocks. But this time I have the settings for the layout. So now I could say, I want this one to have a red background and I want the next one to have a green background. I don't know why, I uh, probably already did some stuff in preparation again. Always reset, reset your examples properly when you make online demos. Uh, so now I made a couple adjustments, set the background color for those different layout sections. And when I go back into the template for that, I could now use that to make horrible HTML choices again and apply the background color directly as a style attribute, or I could um, have a custom class here. Maybe I have something like BG and then I would do layout, come on, layout background. So this is as easy as it gets. So this would now put in the background values that I put into my layout settings. Again, you can define as many fields as you want for layout settings. You can put additional tabs in there. Um, you can combine all of those. Um, yeah, to get like really, really complex layout settings if you want to. You could even, and I mean, this is kind of the th things that often blow me away. When we introduced this, the first thing that people tried were like, can I have nested layouts? Can I use layouts in layout settings? Can I have blocks in layout settings? Can I have layouts in block settings? So like inception and um, I put a CMS in my CMS is like the 
<laughs> the vibe here, but often, yeah, when, I mean, if you have like really, really complex projects, you get to those points where you say, ah, yeah, I, I need this kind of stuff, right? Um, so yeah, you can actually do that. You can have layouts within layouts. You can have blocks within layouts. You can have blocks within blocks. Um, it's all possible. Again, as I said before, the idea is to have a nice editing interface on one hand, but on the other hand, have like full control for the designers and the developers to write really good HTML, not the kind of HTML that I wrote, um, like control what kind of styling you will make available, what kind of settings you make available, kind of block types you make available. All of this is, is completely possible. And again, of course, you can also um, reuse the speaker block that we used before. So you can, of course, also set this field sets option again that we use in the blocks field and say, okay, I want to allow heading, what did we, heading image quote, uh, and then speaker. So now that we defined our block, our custom block, we can reuse this of course, and then put it where somewhere here, maybe that looks nice. So now we have the speaker in here and we can upload a nice image again. And I'm using Mark now, he has to go through this. I don't care. So now I have my custom block within my layout, same snippet uh, control as I had before. Yeah. So this is basically it. This is the layout field and the blocks field. Um, it gets super exciting, as I said before, with custom blocks, with overriding snippets in a way that you want them to be um, controlling the, the layout HTML that you, in the way that you need it to be and just play with it, play with the layout options, the column options, and yeah, just give it a try and, and let us know what you think about it. I really hope that it solves this problem of have not having to nest fields within fields too often and just having like rather um, simple layout options here and then work with those. Um, yeah, this is the layout field, the second big um, field invention that we come up with in this in this new release. And it is now a part of the core and you can instantly play with it. You don't have to install a plugin. It's just there right away to play with it. And also, of course, this one, this part here is definitely in the starter kit. So if you want to have a starting point um, without setting up your own um, definitions, then take the starter kit as a starting point for this. Whew. The big two are already over. Mark, what is the time? I have absolutely no control over I'm, I'm, I'm talking yeah. for ages, right? Yeah, but don't worry about time because uh, you're the only one speaking. Therefore, <laughs> there's no one waiting for yeah. his or Just, her slot. Maybe I should stop when there's no, no, like 10 people left or something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, just just go ahead. I know. Um, I, I think um, as the two major um, features are now like covered, maybe um, get on to the, the the smaller but very important features as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's what, what was the plan with with the break, like a couple more minutes, and then we go go on with the break. Yeah, I just okay. uh, um, I just adapted the the schedule like to give you ten more minutes, and then we mm -hmm. just do ten minute break with Toby playing some tunes, and uh, um, yeah, just yeah, go okay, ahead cool. and. Okay, so the, um, then I will talk a bit more about the, the spin-off fields that come from like the development work that we did on those two. And then in the second part, I can talk more about authentication and the date field and get a bit more to the, to the other features. Um, I mean, authentication is again, just it's like such a big, big new feature. And there are so many little details in this release that I'm probably not even going to mention today. So if you can do me a favor and please check out the release page if you have time for it for it later or maybe tomorrow, whatever, and just go through it. I mean, the team has put so much effort into it and um, the, 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 it's often easy to demonstrate the, the shiny parts, but the other parts that hopefully make your daily life easier, they are they get as much passion as, as those big fields from us and we really try to make your lives easier. So give, check them out as well. Um, Okay, as a spin-off, so as you have seen, we have like simple inline, what you see is what you get editing now. And this entire block concept and the layout concept 
is built around the idea that we never really have to introduce big what you see is what you get fields that solve everything, that solve headlines and block quotes and images and tables and whatnot. But we can solve this on a block level, which makes it a lot easier for us, a lot more extensible for us, a lot more um, controllable for us. But at the same time, we can have such nice things as this little tiny inline HTML, um, yeah, what you see is what you get editor, which really just focuses on inline elements. And since we already had it in the core and since we already needed it for our blocks, um, we then spun it off into its own field. Uh, should go back to here. And you can see it here. I mean, this is such a typical example Well, the ad address actually isn't. But mo many times you will find yourself with a point where you say, okay, I need a custom field. And that could be just a little meta description, like a margin content for uh, an image or like just a tiny little piece of text that, um, that need, might need some bold text in it or might need a link in it. And so far in Kirby, you had to use Markdown for that. So you would use our text area field for that and then write Markdown and of course, this is still possible. I mean, we are not removing the markdown field, obviously. But if you want to provide something for your editors, we say, okay, they should have a bit more um, or a bit less technical way of just adding a link or just making something something bold. You can now make this confidently with this new um, inline editing field. And the good thing about this inline editing um, field is. Again, you can control it as it's called writer, by the way, and you can completely control it. So you still can um, tell which kind of inline elements should be available. So let's just quickly check that out. Um, in my about blueprint, I have the address field here and it's a writer, as you can see. And now I can have, um, add additional marks option and the marks is um, telling this field which kind of inline elements should be available. And in this case, we can say, I only want to make sure that stuff can be bold and maybe some links should be, yeah, should be injectable here. And that means now my toolbar is a lot smaller and I only get those options and I can be sure that only those options are applied. And also when, pay, when copy, uh, content is pasted, um, the field will also automatically make sure to filter out the inline elements and the other HTML elements that shouldn't be in there. And that's kind of the confidence that you need with such a field that say, okay, yeah, I, I took care of that kind of styling. I have my CSS um, rules for bold text within that text field, but I haven't, uh, but I don't want italic text in there or whatever. So this is just such a typical use case and it's now super easy with the writer field. And um, there is also another spin-off, which we use for our list block, which is the list field and solves the same problem. So oftentimes you just need a list. You need a simple way to create a list, maybe with nested lists, but nothing else, not, not kind of uh, additional content. And now you can do this. So you can put a list item in here, item, item, item. You can have nested items, um, but that's kind of it. So the field is taking care of um, making sure it's just a list and you can only get the HTML for the list. Those, um, those fields here, they store their content as HTML with such control over the HTML that it's been created. Um, it didn't really make sense for us to, to break that down even more and, and store it in JSON as well. Um, because this is kind of already very much under control and very limited in, in its options. As you see, if you've, uh, as you've seen here, it has the same marks option. Um, I left it in there. Um, it already worked, so I can only switch between bold text and link, and I can change my um, list type, and that's kind of it. Um, I I really like those single purpose fields, and we have a lot of them in Kirby, um, where you really can make sure that you break down your content into tiny little pieces that make sense for you from a design perspective, from an architectural perspective, um, for, your, for your HTML to make sure that your HTML is semantic and then everything else, um, yeah, your editors just fall into that content grid 
if you want to call it like that, they just fill out those fields and they can always be sure that the content is good and the content is clear. And um, many times, I don't know about you, you probably have um, your own experience with this, but um, in my client projects, when I still did client work, I often experienced this, that clients are super happy when they have a very clear structure that they can follow um, when it comes to content editing. And you don't give them too many um, um, yeah, weird long form text fields where they just have to put in their stuff on them on their, on their own, but you try to break it down for them and then they just can fill in the form. And they, in my, in my experience, they often tend to um, be more motivated and uh, less doubtful about making breaking changes or um, yeah, introducing content that shouldn't be formatted that way. And it often helps the team to move, move forward faster. But maybe you have completely different experience and just let me know. I, I, this is kind of just a special part about Kirby that custom fields are so easy to add and that you should, you should really do that. Okay, so those are the two spin-off fields that come from blocks and from layouts and you can use them instantly. They are all also part of the core now. And yeah, you can replace your text areas. You don't have to, you can upgrade them step-by-step step, wherever it makes sense. Um, it's, it's completely up to you. Okay, I, before I move on with more stuff, I think we should take, take a break, right, Mark? Now back to some nerdy technical things. Yeah. What's left over? Nerdy technical things. I, I, I'm a bit afraid that I'm uh, like overwhelming people here. I hope it's you will, going certainly. fine. You will, but um, I mean, that, that's part of it, right? So new features are always like, oh, change. Some people go like, yes, change. And some people go like, yeah. no, don't change anything, please. <laughs> Keep it as it is. You well, know, that, that's part of it. That's, that's, that was just the last question that I read when or the last comment that I read before you switched on the video again, um, um, where, where Luke said, uh, oh, there are so many changes to the blueprints. Well, I, I hope it didn't come across that way because there are no changes to the blueprints. So um, yeah. there is, we, we list the breaking changes for every release, for every like big release. Um, and mm -hmm. this one is a big release and there are breaking changes, but they are not happening on any of that level or any of that stuff that you just saw. Um, the breaking changes in this release, and I just wanted to want to merge the, um, mention them quickly, is really just about we dropped uh, the PHP support for an old end of life PHP version. So 7.2 is no longer supported, but it's also no mm -hmm. longer supported by the core team. So that's I think totally fine. And um, another breaking change is that we removed old methods. Um, what, which we declared as deprecated already in Kirby 3, so over a year yeah. ago. So we already said, okay, those methods are going to be removed. Um, and whenever we do this, we, we mark them as deprecated really early and then remove them like a half a year later or a year later in this case. So anything else should be working just fine. And we did a lot of tests. Uh, Ahmed, our birthday kid, um, did a lot of tests with plugins. So he tested more than 20 plugins most of the popular plugins um, for us, we tested lots of stuff beforehand. We, the release candidate ran for three weeks. So in theory, there shouldn't be any problems when you upgrade your project to, to this new version. And you don't have yeah. to use any of those features that we introduce right now. Um, you can just bring them in step by step if you need them. If you don't, that's totally fine. You can keep writing Markdown. You can keep all the old stuff. You mean um, like me? still work yeah, yeah. I mean, files, even though my panel is in, in place. <laughs> I, I, I mean, that, that's, it, 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 this is like such a typical thing in, um, for, for any, anyone as out of those uh, developers and designers out there. And I mean, I, I really still count myself into this kind of freelance um, directory because you often don't have the time to do those upgrades at the time that the CMS comes out with updates. So, um, the clients might not have the time or the budget for it. You might not have the time. It's the end of the year. Nobody, nobody has time for this right now. So um, we wanted to make it as smooth as possible for you. Uh, do the upgrade whenever you feel like it. 
uh, 3.4.5 is the last stable version. If you don't want to upgrade, that's also totally fine for now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just introducing new options as you as you move along. Yeah, but not on the price that everything gets more bulky and slow and not as performant as Kirby is known for, actually, right? So many people rave about like the performance that Kirby is giving your website. And um, yeah. I think someone already asked, um, will it yeah. like, will, will this, will one of the prices we pay like less performant websites because yeah. of all the new features? Yeah, I totally get it. I mean, this is also such a big concern for us. And those of you who've been asking for an, a what you see is what you get editor as part of the core have always gotten the same uh, replies from me that we are very hesitant with adding such big features. And when mm -hmm. we add them, they have to be 100% justified. And we have to make 100% sure that we did everything to avoid um, blowing up the core. That's why we remove old stuff. That This is why we have some breaking changes with old methods in this version, because we constantly take care of refactoring old stuff, making sure that the core stays, stays up to date and clean and up, uh, prepared for new PHP versions. Like this one is coming out with support for PHP 8. That we make sure that when we introduce something new, it's not having any negative effect on the site performance and also not having any negative effect on the panel performance. Um, we make lots of tests around that. And um, we ran into those issues while we worked on it. And then we rolled it back because of that, because this is really, really, really important for us. Kirby should mm -hmm. always be fast. That's, I mean, performance is not just um, a buzzword. Performance is such an important thing. I mean. It, it has so many aspects to it. it it's uh, for the visitors, for the climate, for the editors, for the servers, for everything. Yeah. I mean, there's there's so many things con connected to it and it's super important to us, most definitely. Yeah. And we True. also are not going to toss in such new fields, such new big fields every other week. This is not going to happen. This is yes. like the biggest step that we made in the last, I don't know, two years four years, I don't know, like yeah. really, really big step. Great. So let's get to a few other things that I, as I think, uh, are quite important, not only for like the future of Kirby, but like also for maybe some people who thought about, well, we like to use Kirby, but we can't because like, for example, two factor authentication, just a yeah. must for some. So yeah. What, uh, you want to take over or yeah, yeah yeah let me just That's start cool. the screen sharing again okay one thing before i move on is um i'm extremely happy that this release is such a direct response to what we got from the community and i think we're going to speak about that a bit more later but just i i, I ticked off the boxes today on our feedback platform so we have a feedback platform at feedback.getkirby.com where you can post um, new ideas and feature requests and then you can upvote existing ones. And um, we, we started this, uh, we, we had them on GitHub for a while, and then we moved to this new platform called Nault, like half a year ago or something. And the activity has, the, there has been mind blowing and it has been so, so, so important for us to move to this new platform because we now instantly see new trends and we see the features that are really highly required and the things that might yeah, be interesting for the future, but not uh, super, super urgent right now. And for the first time, we as a team really felt in control with what we want to add to the latest release because it was just so clear what kind of the, yeah, the main issues are. And one of those main issues was like authentication. And it's always a big point when it comes to uh, yeah, the cust uh, content management system because it's such a critical feature it has to be super secure um, it has to follow um, like best practices and standards and um, it's not something that you work on lightly it's something that yeah that has has a big effect and we often shied away from introducing new authentication methods or um, for example we didn't have a password reset so far out of the reason that we yeah we rather kept them out of it um, and, and yeah, as a yeah, as, as a security before we implement something and we are not 100% sure yet. And so I'm super, super excited that in this release, we got to this point where I said, okay, this we now have a really rock solid implementation. And um, 
we can offer all those features that people requested when it comes to authentication. So this is what I want to show you now in, in this uh, session. So right now, what we had is your simple email and password-based authentication. And this works great for many scenarios, but it also has um, a few problems. So one problem might be that as the, 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 the larger your team of editors grow, um, the harder it gets to, um, yeah, to, to enforce a certain kind of standard when it comes to yeah, passwords and how often passwords change and um, how secure passwords are of your editors. Not everyone is using a password manager. Some um, people still prefer to use passwords that they can remember. And this can become an issue. And of course, that's something that we wanted to solve. So two-factor authentication was something, as you just mentioned, has been really highly requested. And an email or code-based verification um, has also been one of those features that has been requested quite often, uh, together with the option to build plugins for authentication. So you, you can create, create your own um, authentication um, code verification plugins. So let me give you a quick overview of how you can use those. So by default, everything is staying the same. So it's again, an additive feature. You don't have to use it out of the box but you probably want to. So another reason why we, okay, let me mention that quickly. Another reason why we had this kind of simple email based, um, email and password based login and not have a, had a password reset um, feature or something like this is always, they are always relying on um, working email connections. So this is, we were, when, when we talk about um, content management development or content management system development, um, we are often restricted by what is possible on the different server setups and setting up a working email um, sending mechanism is not always trivial for everyone. And so we didn't want to make this uh, like a forced default feature um, or something that is enabled by default. And then you can't really set up your email connection um, or you, you can't get your email connection working and basically your installation is broke. So. Once you have set up your email connection, so this is the first step you, you have to do in order to use those new features, and you can find the docs in, um, you can find the, the, yeah, the options for that in the documentation. You can use our new auth settings. And the default, and we have a, um, an option called methods in there. And with methods, we can now enable or disable certain authentication methods. And the default authentication method is just password. That would be what we see right now. So let's say we want to switch to code-based authentication. So we can do this by simply doing like, like, like that and then I reload the login. So now password-based authentication is completely switched off. I can't log in with my password anymore. Um, what I have to do now is I have to enter my email address and then very much like you see in lots of services nowadays, even on Vito, it's the same thing. Um, you get like a one-time login code that you can then use via email when your email connection is set up correctly. And you can type in that login code and then you can log in with this one-time login code. And we have settings to set out, set the time, uh, time out for that login code. And as I said before, we also have a new plugin extension so you can create your own um, login code mechanisms. So you, for example, you can send those login codes via SMS. And I think this is, this is a really cool step that will help many to avoid storing passwords at, at all. I mean, this is the, the biggest benefit of this is you never really store a password, password on your server and that's quite a cool thing. Um, you can also combine this with say, okay, I want to, um, Provide, I still want to provide passwords, simple password-based logins, but I also want to offer the option to switch to, um, to the code authentication. I have to go back. So now I can switch and I can switch between login via email or login via password and have like two options. And another thing that's now possible is I can enable password reset. This doesn't work in combination with the code uh, verification because it doesn't make any sense, but 
but in this, um, but you can combine it with your regular password reset and say, okay, um, in this case, I enter my email address, I forgot my password, I get a verification code, I get, um, and the, the difference between the login, um, the code-based login is that you then get to your password um, setting screen and you can ch choose a new password instantly. So now this is possible as well. And then, as I mentioned before, also super important is this new option to enable two-factor authentication. So now we can set two-factor authentication for password logins um, to true in this case. And then whenever we uh, password reset is automatically um, disabled because this wouldn't also would, would contradict itself. But now when I try to log in, I get another email and I have to um, then type in the login code additionally to my email and my password to log in um, with a secondary step. So those are the authentication methods. And in addition to that, as I said before, you can customize them. You can um, yeah, change settings. How long does those login codes um, stay alive? Um, I think the default, or Lucas should co correct me. I think it's five minutes. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. So um, you should check that out in our docs and we have it in the reference there if you want to use that. So this is a big, big step in my opinion, especially with the plugins, a lot more things get possible and you can bind it to different authentication systems. And this is really cool. But what's also cool and also has been requested a lot is um, people want to have more control over how their logins look like. Um, this is this typical white label solution where you kind of want to look, the, you want um, that the system looks like your system, right? It's a company system. It has been customized. And I mean, this is one of the strengths in, in my opinion that we try to reduce the, um, yeah, we, the loudness of, of the design of Kirby's admin interface. We try to be very subtle with um, the design that we provide and not put it into a certain kind of custom branding um, that screams Kirby all the time. We want it to be um, as adjustable to what you are building for your customers and um, as possible. And this is ingrained in everything that we do uh, with the blueprint settings and the custom CSS that you can throw at the panel. Um, so you can make it really feel at home for your, for your editors and for your clients. And this means that now with Kirby 3.5, we also have the option to build little plugins to customize the login form. And this is something I prepared and I'm not going to fully show in this demo how to do it. It's again, based on the idea that you write a little bit of um, view component code, um, mostly HTML and CSS, pretty much just uh, HTML and CSS. If you want to see the plain JavaScript for it, this is like extremely simple. So it's just wrapping our login form in a custom um, div and then applying some additional CSS. And I'm going to install that quickly. So if I'm throwing this into our plugin folder and I reload the login, the login I get this super nice, well, extremely customized Megacorp login. Um, well, you get the idea. You would probably then want to embed the customer's um, logo there, maybe add, uh, adjust the colors uh, with a, the additional option to load a custom panel CSS file. Um, you could do even more customizations. I just did the, some tiny customizations there, but to give you this kind of feel of a white, white label solution for your clients. And as I just show you, um, it's a bit of HTML, a bit of CSS, the rest is done by, by Kirby. So even with our login methods, everything still works. Um, if you have multiple methods, if we move two-factor authentication, for example, again, um, the login form handles all the, the complex stuff for you um, and you just wrap your own design around it and then you can customize it. And I think it's it's really, really nice. And it takes it to another level and on many ways. I mean, on a security level, it takes it to another level and also on um, the, the customization options for your clients. 
So those are the new authentication methods. Lucas, if I missed something, please let me know. I think Lucas is also here and hanging around in the chat. Um, I can still mention that later. I mean, this is kind of the, Lucas has spent a lot of time on this, on the authentication um, options. And um, yeah, I'm just super thankful for all his work that he spent, spent on this. Lucas, again, if you have some um, mention, uh, some stuff that you want to mention or some questions that you want directly, uh, want to, to answer directly, please feel free to do that in the chat. Um, as a last step, before I really wrap this up for today, because then otherwise it's getting too much, I want to add a few more, I want to mention a few more things that just changed overall. Um, one of the, th the big things that uh, Nico worked on, and it's kind of those small big things, is a completely overhauled date field. And it's this is kind of the stuff that feels so trivial. Trivial, We think like, hey, what a date field? I mean, just put an HTML date picker in there, but, that, but then the date picker is not available in every browser. Well, it, um, Safari added support recently, I think. But again, it's, it's not something that is completely solved for us. And what we had so far is um, a, an, an option that is based on three select boxes. So this is how we solved it so far. A select box for the day, a select box for the month, and a select box for the year. And then it was often very limited and also gave us a lot of issues over the years. And so we worked on this constantly, constantly had the problems with the date field. And we also constantly had the problem that, of course, um, you want to customize date formats. So what we had so far was this here. So every date just looked like this. And yeah, it works, but it's also super technical. And again, this is, it's such a trivial feature from the outside, but such so hard to get right. And I think um, Nico did a fantastic job with implement, implementing this new date field as a single input. So now you get all the benefits of a single input. You can paste your dates in there. You can roughly um, write something and then the date field should complete the rest. You can, and that's, that's kind of the brilliant part that I really loved about uh, Nico's implementation is what's great, what has been great about the select boxes is the keyboard navigate, keyboard accessibility of, of select boxes. You tap through the select boxes and then you use the up and down arrows to, to navigate through years or to, through months. And we wanted to keep this, or especially um, Nico wanted to keep this. And so now we have a date picker that still has the same kind of functionality. You can tap through, the, through it and you can navigate through it with the arrow keys. And while you do that, and your picker is open, even the picker adjusts. And I, I mean, it's just the small things, but the small things are often big in daily usage. And this is where a lot of time is spent on getting those details right. And so I'm really, really happy about this. You can adjust the format to all, yeah, to your local settings that you would prefer uh, to American dates or to the English date format or whatever kind of date format you want to use. You can put full uh, month names in there. There are multiple options to do that. You should check them out in, um, in, the, in our docs. And um, it's also working with the time field. So the time field has been redone as well, the date time field as well. And it's, yeah, as I said, it's one of those settings that I'm really happy about because the old date field was just not really good. That's one big thing. And then another big thing, and again, big thing from the inside or not so much from the outside, uh, sometimes the, the obvious solutions are so close and we totally miss them. Um, we often got told that people run into this issue. So with Kirby, we have the system, you have the page title here, right? And the page title is directly connected, often directly connected with the URL path for your site or for your page. So you have full control over this, that path here and that path is also the file name or uh, the folder name of that page. And so far we had two separate dialogues for changing the title and also changing the URL. And this often led to problems when people change the title but forgot to adjust the, the URL or they adjusted URL but forgot to change the title. So. Um, by breaking it into dialogues, 
it gave much more pain than it should have given to editors. And this is stupid. It's, it, it's like those things where you, from afterwards, when you look at it, it's just an idiotic um, decision to, to separate it. But at that time, it felt like the right thing to do. And then you come back to it and you put it into one dialogue. And simply, it's like, oh my god, this is so much better. And now you instantly see the, that connection again between the title and the path. And it's easy to adjust that. Um, one other question, and I'm super happy that so many people ask about accessibility in, um, in the questions. We are no accessibility experts, but we are very much um, trying our best to get it right. So whenever we make changes to the panel, we try to make it keyboard accessible. We try to put label on, uh, labels on everything. We try to keep the markup um, semantic. We don't just put a lot of diffs into our view code because we can. We try to, to follow back best practices as we learned them and try to make it as good as we can. But we are a small team that isn't really, that we don't have an expert in that field. So whenever we do something, we always try to find out if we did it correctly. Um, we don't get as much feedback about it as we would like to. We, often, we, we heard quite a few times that the, the panel is quite accessible already and that it's working not, uh, well. But um, again, when we try our best, but we know that we could even be better in many places. And one place that we already improved with this release is our, again, a simple feature, our status icons. So in Kirby, we have three states or statis, whatever the plural of status is, statuses. Um, we have drafts, pages that are completely locked and not accessible from the outside. And then we have uh, listed um, page, uh, unlisted pages, pages that don't have a sorting number and you can assign your own you, way you call them. We call, we call them in review here for notes. So they are accessible via URL, but they might not turn up in a list of blog articles or in a menu or something like that. And then we have the published articles. They just turn up everywhere. And with those three states, we have three abstract icons. And so far, those abstract icons have been just circles and then colors. So we had a red circle, we had a blue circle, and we had a green circle. And we got the feedback that this is not very um, useful for people who are colorblind or have difficulties to, um, yeah, to, to tell colors apart in this case, and that we need distinctive forms for those um, icons to make it clearer. And again, this is one of those changes that seems so simple, but we uh, we spent ages on this um, because there is kind of an abstraction here that we wanted to transport in a way that we don't just use a pencil and uh, a link or an, uh, whatever, like um, icons that have a certain meaning um, because the meaning can change in this case. We, the blue the blue status or the unlisted status means they are in review, but this is something that you can set up in the blueprints and that you can choose um, yeah, according to the projects you're working on. So we wanted to have this abstract idea of something that is not done yet, it's completely open, something that is half done or maybe yeah something in between and then something that is completed. So um, that's the idea behind the circles or the, the forms that we, we chose. And I think we, we tried, I don't know, a couple dozen different variations here and work with different shades and stuff. And um, yeah, in the end, it was important to us to solve this accessibility issue um, because it's not just something that is a problem for someone who's colorblind, but it's also, when you look at it afterwards, something that you instantly increases the usability or the, the discoverability of those icons. Even if you are not colorblind, it helps to spot the drafts easier. In, not in this case, because it's separated anyway, but if you put everything in the same list, then um, it's, it's helping so much. So we try as much as we can. Again, also with the block, blocks field and with the layouts field, everything is keyboard accessible. If something's not keyboard accessible, please, please, please give 
pull us, uh, give us an issue about it. If we missed some labels, if we have something that um, isn't as good as to use as a, um, when you use it via a screen reader as it could be, then please, please help us with issues. Um, oftentimes, um, we are, we are uh, we have we struggle with the testing process. That when we create something new, um, we it's it's really complicated for us to test all the different details of a new feature in every uh, circumstance that can be there. So we might miss something, and but we want to do better in that case. Um, I probably forgot tons of things, but I think I'm just wrapping it up here. I think it's a big release. The rest is on the release page in our docs. No. What? What's missing? I want quick search. I want quick search. Oh, quick search. Okay. Well, that's kind of the 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 cool things as well. We have our quick search up there, and this is also something that Nico worked on. Um, and it's also again kind of a small change from the outside, but I think it's a super effective change. So what you get here now is you just get previews, and I mean. Again, it sounds trivial, but just having um, visual previews for your pages in the quick search or in your files when you search files or users, is just so cool. I mean, it's just so easier, so much easier to spot um, content that you're looking for when you're searching for the right thing. Um, the title helps, the URL helps, but ultimately a visual cue to where your content might be is always um, such a big bonus. And I'm really happy about this. And it looks really cool, right? I, I love the yes. design of it. So yeah, like that's it. that's another thing. Um, but am I allowed to wrap up now, Mark? <laughs> now you are. Come on. No, that's so that's <laughs> so kind kind of you. <laughs> uh, okay, let me stop sharing. Yeah, and then you can just talk about the rest. I mean, as I said, everything is already documented. I hope. I, I think we crossed. We checked off all the boxes that we should have checked off um, when we documented things. So. But there as well, if you find something that isn't documented or isn't as well documented as you wish it would be, then please, please let us know. We can only act on, on such issues. Because <clears throat> most times when there are such issues, we just didn't realize them. It's not that we don't want to solve it. It's just we often just don't know about it. OK. <laughs> I'm stopping here now. That's great. Is anybody and left at all? Yes, I guess. Like, Can we get some applause for Bastian? Virtual applause. Fake applause, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. Now you, you, you're putting applause into the hands of uh, your, our visitors, and you don't even know if they would have applauded at all. They would, they would, I know. Oh, there's, there's someone being late, someone being late. Yay! Yeah, ah, you see. Well done, Bastian. Thank you so much. That was great. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for coming um, to this little nice, cozy place here. I mean, I really, I was totally blown away by the numbers, actually. I didn't expect, I, I thought we were like yeah. 20 people from the Discord and then. Well, there no, are more people not. in Discord, but it's uh, it's it, I'm, I'm I'm I really appreciate that you take the time. I mean, I, it's not. And it just shows the 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 brilliance of of the community um, that yeah. comes with Kirby. I have to say, <clears throat> honestly, and um, yeah, um, I mean, we we got plenty of questions. I fear that we don't get to all of them. A couple no. of them have been answered already by um, the rest of the team that is more or less online as well, like Lucas, like Sonia. Um, Nico. Um, like Nico Ahmed. as well, yes, yeah. Ahmed as well, yes. And there's a couple of people who are there who answered questions already, which is great. And uh, thank I you so we, much for helping. We, yes, and I hope we find the time to to get to a couple of more because uh, there are really um, are a few good questions. But I also um, under Kirby related, I uh, placed some links like the forums link for support and the Discord link, yeah. where you are always like throughout the whole day can uh, ask your questions can get yeah. advice can get thoughts on on things related to kirby so therefore um if we don't cover your question today here or you have a question later when the show is done um just go over to discord or to the forums and get help yeah yeah which is um, which is great 
Uh, and w while we're at it, just by definition, how would you define the forum versus Discord? Like, <laughs> I, I, oh my god! I've seen that's like uh, uh, so. Like from my imagination, it would be forum is like help ask questions to specific problems that you have got with Kirby or related to Kirby, where Discord is more like a chat platform and no support kind of platform, even though there will be and are questions, I know, uh, okay. that people Mark, ask in Discord. Before I right? answer that, I have to, I have to drink a, a drink. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> it almost, I mean, for some people, it might seem like I paid you to ask that question. <laughs> no, no, we did not. Uh, no, no, really. You, you, we, we didn't even talk about this before. Um, and that's super interesting because we have been struggling with this for years. Um, we have started, so as a bit of, bit of background, um, with Kirby 3, when we started working on Kirby 3, like in 2008, 17 or 18 or something i started a little crowdfunding project i called it kirby next and i invited everyone to uh buy a kirby 3 license years in advance or a year in advance and then uh, as a return for their trust um, they would have the chance to look behind the curtains um, and join our internal jack uh, slack group that we opened up um, and this is basically how our chat started. So we started chatting with, so around 400 people back then joined, which was like crazy. And then um, about, I don't know, a couple dozen were always active in that supporter chat as we called it. And we talked about every little step along the way that, that we spent on, on working on Kirby 3. So I made those live streams. I talked about feature ideas and implementations and problems and, and it got very, very intimate, I have to say, like super familiar group, or is it even, you don't say it like that, I don't, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. So it got yes. really more like a family over the, the, the months and years. And when we started, when we launched Kirby 3, um, we had all this background support from, um, yeah, from that Slack group, and it was just amazing. And um, I, I loved it. I, the, the vibe was always fantastic, super friendly. And then after, the uh, Kirby 3 had launched, we were like, okay, this is this crowdfunding thing that happened on Slack. So what do we do with it? Do we shut it down? I mean, now it's basically the idea is over, like, but mm -hmm. Kirby 3 is online now. We don't really, I mean, it was targeted at, at that launch idea of Kirby 3. Uh, but the group was so amazing that we, we, we just decided to keep it and say, okay, we, we stay on Slack. But then we didn't have a concept how we would extend that. So mm -hmm. how would new people join? So we would then go on and sometimes invite new plugin developers or people who were just constantly supporting us, but we didn't have like a real process for it. And it always mm -hmm. felt like this closed circle. Um, and on one hand, it was good that it was a closed circle because it had all this kind of family feeling to it. And we didn't want to lose that, but at the, at the same time, we, we felt like we are kind of um, um, digging something away from the forum and the, the nice people who are hanging around there. And on Slack, people started to ask um, support questions, as you said. So the, the differentiation between the forum and the Slack started to become super difficult. So when do you start, uh, when do you ask questions on Slack? When do you ask questions on the forum? Um, so yeah, we, we kept it we kept it like two parallel universe verses mm -hmm. um, for a long time, and we never really answered that question to ourselves. We said, okay, we, we don't answer support questions on Slack. That was kind of our team policy, and sometimes we violated our own team policy and still answered questions there. And um, then when we got got to this point this year, in uh, yeah, I don't I think in September or something, when we say. Uh, there was there, there was this point where where I felt like we are closing we are keeping this too closed, and we are not giving other people a chance to join this chat. And this chat is so gr so great, and the, the feeling there is so great. And we should open it up to more people. And then we made the decision to move to Discord because Slack doesn't support open groups like this. So, um, well, it does basically. You can fake it somehow, but if but. Slack has a limit, a uh, chat limit of 10,000 messages. And then everything that is older than those 10,000 messages is basically cut off. And 
it started to feel really weird to see that super awesome discussions just went away and they were, yeah, they were gone. And um, yeah, Slack doesn't have a pricing model where you, we could afford um, to pay yeah. for all those people. Yeah. There were 400 people. I think everyone costs $5. So this is something we can't do. Ridiculous, yeah. Yeah. So we switched to Discord and that was a super risky step for us. Um, there was this Will risk break, and I, I wrote it today. The... Yeah, you could be, we, we, exactly. And, and there was a lot of hesitation there. I mean, there was this group of people on Slack who said, this is a great idea do this, Discord is much better. And then there was mm. were a lot of people who were hesitant and said, I, lo I love this Slack. I love that it's closed. I, I don't want this typical tech Again. community bullshit where everybody is just fighting. And I want to. I yeah. want this nice, uh, cozy, safe space. And it's again, um, the, the same the, the same thing, right? Keep the keep what we had and no, like move to some like, it's always the same, no matter yeah. what you pick. But also totally understandable. I mean, I had the same Absolutely. kind of fears. Yeah, I was like, okay, we moved to Discord. What's, what happens next? Um, is, is the vibe suddenly gone? Uh, do we have the same issues that every, or like m uh, so many other communities have? We have like yeah. the typical trolling and um, fighting. And I, I just I just really feared that it would go down, down the drain afterwards. But totally. on the other hand, we didn't have an option. So the option would be to keep a closed circle forever and ever. Um, as a site, yeah, as a parallel universe to the forum, and that didn't feel right. So mm -hmm. um, it was clear that we need the chat, and this is basically answer the, answering the question after all this talking uh, that I'm doing. Um, the forum is fantastic when it comes to support for us, and it has always been a, a very, very, very vital part of our support um, strategy. We, we, by answering questions there, we know that they stay there, and people can find them again. And um, the threads are awesome to to reply to yes. such questions and discuss them and um, yeah, go into people detail. Too. Yeah, um, but at the same time, we realize that the forum isn't great for real time communication. So it's not solving mm -hmm. the same problem as Discord would or as Slack would. And there is a real and understandable need for real time communication. People want to yeah. just hang out together. It's a completely different kind of purpose than on than the forum of course there is a problem that things get mixed up and of course when you have a chat people will ask support questions there and of course um this is where it gets difficult and so we started sometimes we started a little bit of policing and saying now yeah, when you ask a support yeah. question please go to the forums ask it there in discord again even if there's no message limit um that it will be gone at some point Mm -hmm. it's it's just scrolling up and then it's out of this out of sight and it's still hard to find there and so we as a team we, we spoke about this a couple times and then we just said okay let's just let it flow in a in a natural way we say why shouldn't the community be allowed to help itself when they want to so whenever someone asks a question and someone is in the chat and that who can answer that question well the better solution would be they both meet on the forum again and then uh, have that discussion there but sometimes people have an urgent uh, problem they just sit at you know, their computers have to solve something have a deadline or whatever and they need mm -hmm. an answer right now so mm, it's kind of n not that cool to, to send them away um, and if the community is there to help each other then that's great I mean it's, it's cool um, we would still prefer if um, stuff could be kept in a more persistent way but yeah. Other, uh, on the other hand, it's fine that way. But we decided for ourselves to have the same policy there as well. Keep um, stick to the forum when it comes to answering support questions, and not answering support <clears throat> questions in Discord if it's not just super easy and we can answer it in like ten minutes and uh, ten seconds and we feel like it. Um, yeah. So, I, I guess that's also, also kind of the message that we send out to the community. Don't expect us to reply to support questions on Discord. It's not about us being rude or something like that. It's just about us trying to keep the forum as the better place to have um, a conversation about issues. Yeah, and and also for having your like your question is something that most probably someone else is having as well. And with the forum, it is just in a catalog of like solved questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and it helps other people as well. So yeah, that's quite 100%. Nice. And we often get that yeah. as feedback as well, that, that they found solutions in the forum and yeah. So self-help. Can we get to is... a few of the questions then? Yeah, yeah, of course. Should we have a look? So let's scroll all the way down. Blimey. <laughs> that's <laughs> quite some questions. It's a lot. Oh my God. So let, let's start at the beginning. You, you already answered. Uh, no, no, you just said like, let's talk about it in the Q&A part. So Jonathan, he was asking about uh, VC, uh, WCAG accessibility in Kirby 3.5. Yeah. Um, this, I, I think I already answered the part about the accessibility in the panel. Oh, mm -hmm. um, but about creating accessible websites, that is um, very close to uh, the things that I said before about our philosophy of not um, predefining your front end work. And mm -hmm. that, that is super important to us. We don't say you have to use this CSS framework. We don't say you have to write a pure HTML like that. We, we try to avoid wherever we can to give predefined HTML solutions. We, we don't package them in a way that you have to use them. Um, and this is important for many reasons. Every team has, every developer has their own way of writing HTML, of creating their sites, and we don't want to have any influence on that. Every team, every de uh, de developer, every agency has their own way of building their front-end assets, um, their build process, all that stuff. And uh, Kirby has no saying in that at all, and it's, it's ex extremely important to us. We don't have to follow a, a certain um, um, system of um, URL paths or uh, where mm -hmm. you store your CSS files. All of this is completely up to you. And that's the same with accessibility. Um, you are 100% free to write the HTML in the way that you would. And as a part of that, you are also 100% free to create 100% accessible um, uh, websites. On the other hand, we don't offer magic solutions. So we don't mm -hmm. just give you an accessibility plugin and you put it in there and then it's done. I truly believe that this is not possible. Um, you have to know what you're doing to create, or especially you have to know what you shouldn't be doing in order yeah. to, to avoid um, accessibility issues. And I guess it's a, a certain kind of I mean, misconception, what... in, in my opinion, that there is kind of a, a silver bullet or is it, is it uh, like a magic, magic solution that you can just drop in and then it's done. But again, yeah. we don't block you in any way. So this is super I, important. I guess you can do your best obstacles. making the, the panel uh, accessibility yeah. uh, accessible for, for people. Um, but in the end, what the, the project itself that is like yeah. made with Kirby, and there's like much to play into it, <clears throat> like a lot of design decisions and UX decisions, certainly, yeah. which, which you don't have any influence on. Even though you, you might say you can you can make sure that the starter kit, for example, is as accessible as possible yeah. for you and uh, what you can do, but then the rest is up to the people using Kirby as yeah. their choice, right? Exactly. Cool. Um, we got one a question answered. Like, how do you uh, what do you need to do the two FA uh, yeah. functionality? We got this covered. Lucas covered this with a link. Find it in the questions, please, and then. We got Thomas, who's asking, what's your preferred choice? OK, that was just a <laughs> question of, of taste. M mine What's was a quick search, I have to say, because it's like so it's so simple and easy. Um, uh, and I just like like the visual approach that you go like, oh, well, yeah, I remember that image. Anyways, uh, any plans on making all the new panel layout features available through pure markdown? Yeah, meaning without the panel. Yeah, this, the, the, well, we left a path there with, um, no, we, we actually we didn't. So the, 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 you, the, 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 the content is all for the field, for the block, no, for the blocks field and the layout field is stored in JSON. And of course, this is not the most human writable uh, format, but you can switch the block, the way that the blocks store their content to pretty fight JSON. So that would give you like a yeah a pretty version of JSON like you would find in a composer or in an NPN uh, in a package JSON file. 
-hmm. And you can totally write that manually. I mean, this is still totally possible. We moved away from YAML for um, blocks and layouts for um, various compatibility issues. So the, the builder plugin was always suffering from this. And we only found um, to switch to JSON to solve this. Um, yeah, but I mean, this is, it's leaving a certain kind of path there, but you could still use it in a way that cool. you just write stuff into the text files. Yeah. Good. Um, then Lionel is asking, what is the best way to deploy Kirby in a high, um, highly available manner? For example, having multiple Kirby instances, instances in an auto-scaling group. Whew, I, I think th th those kind of setup questions, they go too far for today, I'm, I'm afraid, because that's, that's, such, that's a, such a specialized question. Would that um, be a question for the forum? Yeah, or for Discord. I mean, we could we could discuss this on Discord mm -hmm. and see how other people solve this. Um, yeah. And I have to say, we we never, as a team, we never set it up in a high availability matter um, um, ourselves because we we didn't need to right now. So there mm -hmm. are other people in the community who have more experience with that than I have. The good thing about file-based systems in general, and that's not just a Kirby feature, is you have just text files. So syncing stuff between different servers is actually super easy. You can throw a simple uh, rsync uh, script at it and then just move stuff between different servers and have it available on multiple servers. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a, the, the nice part about it, but otherwise it would go too far into details. Okay. So we will know, never uh, get to this list, Mark. I, I have no idea how we should filter this. Uh, <laughs> Come on, we, we're gonna go. We're gonna go for it. Um, Tom is asking, uh, can we define custom inline formats for blocks? I think that is answered because Lucas already said like not yet, but it's planned for the yeah, future. Planned. So yeah. that's like uh, the things that come with like a dot release where you go like, okay, we already have those things yeah. that we have on our list to improve stuff. And there, there, there are so many. I mean, what I can say about this is there are so many things, and I, there are other questions in the same way. Um, there are so many things where we said, oh, it would be so cool if we could add this to the layout field and this to the layout mm -hmm. field and this to the blocks, blocks field. So there are so many future ideas already from us and from, um, the, from the, the community. But um, we had to draw a line at some point and say, okay, <laughs> if we put all this stuff in there, then the blocks and the layout field is going to be released in 2025 or something. And then it's yeah. probably going to be complete, but it's also going to be uh, out of outdated or I don't know. Yeah. Um, hash and salt, he, he was, because uh, it's Jim, so that I, yeah. I, I guess it's he. Um, he was asking what possessed you to make a CMS. I guess that would be a topic for a late bart night <laughs> and or yeah. like a night in my kitchen over there. <laughs> so where Basti and I oftentimes like chat the night away about exactly this kind of shit uh, stuff. Um, where like I made yeah, a yeah. list of, of things. So in case no, no questions would drop in, I have like these kind of questions like here, I guess we don't come to my list, but I guess we have just to make a new, uh, uh, another like little show about like all this stuff that like is like in the background like because yeah. this is a question i uh that easily feels like two or three hours <laughs> to be you honest al you also have you also have to ask my naive younger self for uh, about yes. that <laughs> yes i mean i know the background a li little bit like to have like something that you made for yourself and your clients yeah. and your projects and then out of this um or yeah. or this uh, uh developed but like uh, it, I, I think i think it's a very interesting question actually and to see like the path of it and also because maybe i i was following this path for the last 10 or more years that uh, that that you made and and that that created kirby uh, as as it is right now yeah um david is asking uh what is the best way to serve events in my case running courses and participants sub pages or a structure to know i use a structure field for participants and pages for the events so Lucas has answered this already a little bit because um, he said like I'd uh, I'd say that's indeed the best way. A structure makes sense if it's uh, if the complexity is limited. Um, for example, if the entries don't need to have their own fields, for its ease of use and compactness, pages are good to keep everything where it belongs. 
Yeah, I mean, again, this is one of the questions that we could talk about this forever. And those, those yeah. content architecture tech, um, questions are super interesting. And this kind of uh, something that is special to Kirby, I think, is like the, the playfulness with which you can um, approach this and try multiple mm -hmm. things and try the, the best way that works for you. Pages are a great way you could use users for this and link them to um, to the events. Um, phew, there are many, many roads lead to Rome or, or whatever you, that um, proverb is. So yeah, there's, it's difficult to answer definitely. Yeah, I guess it's also a matter of taste sometimes, yeah. right? Like the, the way that, yeah. but um, also a good thing for discourse, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> um, Daniel is uh, asking, uh, are you guys putting and will be putting a focus on accessibility with Kirby? Uh, yeah, same for example, question keeping as before, the panel yeah. accessible. Yes, we covered this already, I guess. Yeah. Um, yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, but in the end, it's it's your turn to make your projects accessible um, for the rest of the world, right? Using yeah. Kirby. Uh, I, I, as I mean, maybe it's also, I, I don't want to sound, um, I, I don't know, I, I don't know how to put it, but um, we don't, we, we, this is kind of a, a problem that we sometimes have with Kirby is that we are, we don't have the size where we instantly just can invite a group of people who use screen readers and say, let's just mm -hmm. use this together and see how it works, make user tests. So this is, we, we, this is sometimes something that we are not structured to do. We are a remote team. Everyone's working in their own home. We are completely spread over, um, Germany and, and Turkey and, um, and we are also still quite small. I mean, I'm the mm -hmm. only f f um, one who's working full time on this, and the other ones are freelancers. So, this is kind of the, the, the thing where we need, we urgently need help from the community and uh, to tell us this is not working, this is not working, this is not working. I know I, I, I don't want to be in this demanding situation where I say we need that help, but mm -hmm. this is actually to the honest answer there. We, we need yes. more help to, with um, it, real life experience because. To be brutally honest, we I'm not in uh, I, I I don't really um, have the experience of using a screen reader every day, and I think that's some of the the things that you really have to know the pain points yes. in order to to fix them. Totally yes. Um, next one is by Colly, already answered, but still reading it out to for those who might have the same question. Uh, Colly was asking, can I introduce blocks into a blueprint that already use simple markdown fields as I would um a yeah. structure field by type uh, field type does it store data in the same simple manner as a structured field does and then no. lucas already asked uh, answered uh. The, yes the blocks and layout fields store their content as json inside the content file so you can still use other fields next to them yeah so that's already yeah. answered okay there. cool yeah mm -hmm. uh thomas uh, asking let me see if this is answered it is uh, has the layout field a direct connection to uh, the or a template or do we uh, no. create a layout grid twice no you and can nico you pointed can. him to a, a helpful um link yeah. how to render layouts and templates you the, the, the cool thing about the layouts and the blocks field blocks field is you can um have a shared setup for layouts and blocks so you don't have to redefine them in every a page type um, so you can reuse the yaml that you write once and extend that or reuse that and you can also mm -hmm. reuse the html code for for all of that so you don't have to rewrite it but you can that's important so mm -hmm. if you want to you can cu customize it for every page type and every page type could have a co completely customized layout and blocks field but you could also have shared ones that always work the same way nice good uh, uh, Christian is asking, um, is there any limit in terms of number of pages in Kirby? Will I run into issues when I have, let's say, 300,000 articles? Yeah. Uh, um, so I think that it has already been uh, answered. and um, Kind of, yes. Kind of, yes. Yeah. So the, the problem, and um, I'm repeating myself often here, is mm, the type of architecture you're choosing. So the file system is really great if you have a, like a, a vast tree with lots of nested branches and um, things go yeah, yeah multiple ways you can have thousands of pages like that and it's super fast i mean mm -hmm. the kirby website has a couple of thousand pages without any problems and it's still super super snappy but um, the file system has a limitation in being efficient when you put 
you have one folder and then 300,000 subfolders, direct subfolders in that one folder. That's not very, not very efficient. Um, yeah. You can easily have uh, like a thousand or a couple thousand, but there is a limit to that because Kirby has to go through that and filter that. Um, you can solve those issues. You can solve those issues with caching. You can store indexes with that in, in, in an additional place, but it's not pre-made for that. So you have okay. to put in some work to get it get it working. I guess it's the, uh, I often compare it this way. Um, the, the, when you work with like um, the typical site architecture where you have pages and sub pages and sub sub pages and different menus and different ways where things branch out, the file system is just awesome to replicate that. Um, where databases like um, structural databases have like really big issues to, to replicate the same uh, trees. You always have to work with parent IDs and you fake that same tree architecture. <clears throat> On the other hand, the database is so much better when it comes to long, um, long lists that you need to index and filter um, in comparison to just storing everything in a single folder. Okay. You can basically also compare it with the usability of the file system. When you go through your file system and as a user in Finder or in Windows Explorer, you come to a folder and you have like thousands and thousands of um, files in that single folder, you are probably having a really hard time finding something in that folder. And it's a bit, bit like that. Cool. Um, next two questions have been answered. So I tend to really skip them. Yeah. Because they, they, are, they, are, they are definitely answered. People like um, and Jonathan Douglas got an answer from uh, Lucas and Christian got from Nico and Lucas. Um, well, good. Um, then we had this one before uh, in, in between when I uh, asked you like uh, as more and more features are added to the yeah. core, how will it impact the performance? Yeah. <clears throat> so um, I guess this one um, is kind of covered um, yeah. and you already spoke about this as well. Lucas has uh, taken care of the question. So I think we don't need to go back to this one also. Um, and, and again, as we are like just skimming through these things, um, just please um, use the chance to go to the Discord. And if you really yeah. want to have a, a conversation about all this kind of stuff, this is really the place to go to. Um, and there's lots of other people who are actually uh, in real life are using Kirby and yeah. they have experiences with all this kind of stuff and can maybe give you also their insights uh, from what they learned with their projects. Yeah. Um, so then we got Stefan. Uh -huh. Can options be applied to a certain layouts only, for example, background color, only for the one, uh, like for the full one, one layout. Uh, yeah, and we're working like, on currently that. Not, yeah, guess one of the, the updates that's uh, coming. Exactly. Out. Yeah, that's also one of the features where I said, okay, we have to cut it at this point and get to mm -hmm. that later. Yeah. So then uh, um, someone asks, um, I noticed that the new writer type field doesn't support or allow um, HTML lists. Any plan on adding this to it? Sorry, I'm, I kind of missed that one. So could, could you repeat That's it? the one I repeated for him. Um, Scooch. So I noticed that the new writer type field doesn't allow HTML lists. Ah, Any plan okay. on adding yeah. lists to it? Um, so right now the concept for the writer field really was to keep it at just for text, that I inline text think. paragraphs, and then that's it. I think we have to wait for, for feedback like this and see where this goes. I mean, this is really, uh, you really have to consider it like a spin off of the box field. The direction would be blocks field first. And then if this doesn't work for you, then yeah, we, we have to, to find out where, where this is heading. But I don't, what I don't want to um, build is that we have an, a second field that creates the same kind of feature set that mm -hmm. the blocks do in one field. So then we would have so the same pro problems as before. I guess um, if, if you if you don't, uh, if you don't just need the one or either just fall yeah. back to the to the general field, right? So yeah, that, exactly. That yeah. everything. <clears throat> I mean, otherwise you, you will end up with a link field, a button field, uh, a um, picture, yeah. fields, you know. And also, I mean, the, 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 the bigger problem is uh, that I see is when we, oops, 
lights gone out. Um, lights so off. When, when, um, Nadine is calling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I think the battery went out. Uh, so when <laughs> the um, when we start adding still good. like lists to the lists to the, the writer field, then the next one's coming up and saying, could you add quotes to the writer field? Could you add headlines mm -hmm. to the, the to the writer field? And then the purpose of or the idea behind the field is completely lost. So the yeah. blocks should be True. used for that. True. Here's an interesting question, but I think that it's not really like easily answerable. I mean, mm -hmm. there, there's like um, a couple of people already replied. So with the layout field, what's the best way to handle responsive designs? Yeah. Like the need to shift columns around based on the available space. Yeah. How does the panel itself handle layouts on mobile, for example? Yeah. So I guess this is like really complex. And it, of course, this came to my mind when you yesterday showed me the kind of stuff yeah. like, so is this something that is a mobile first kind of practice to work with this kind of stuff. Um, maybe in, in edge cases, I think usually you'd expect someone to sit in front of these kind of things on a desktop, like doing like content uh, uh, stuff, of course. It, the, I guess it, it works on mobile, right? But um, phew, difficult. Uh, well, so what, what we, how we solve it in the panel is a very strict and brute force way. So we have just mm -hmm. a, one single break point for it. And we say, okay, when is, there's enough space for the grid, then we give mm -hmm. the grid enough space for the columns. And otherwise it's a single column. Everything is just in one thing. Um, so we don't have like a direct reflection of what you would set up um, um, yeah. like with multiple breakpoints. And I want to make sure that it's clear that those fields are not intended as a direct representation of what yes. you are building for the front end. And I this is, super. I guess, the the the, um, the dangerous thing that people now go like, oh, well, great, I can now like, like drag and drop together my layout in the panel, and then this will reflect on the layout on the website, right? So, yeah, I mean, which it, is definitely not the case, right? It, it, it would, but uh, the the thing is, we wanted to we want to have this abstract layer where you say, okay, I still care about content structure. So, um, finally, I still. Um, create structured content and that structure in this case is a layout so um, the color the, 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 the columns are a layout so when I have mm -hmm. a look at my columns or at my layout field most of the, of the times it's also a representation of what what's happening with the content so when you say you have like three columns next to each other for features those features kind of belong to each other and that's kind of the basic idea behind how such layouts are created or such a header is an important like yeah thing that that has been rep represented there but um finally we, we always want to make sure that there is a kind of meta level in the content administration part we say this might end up as a website site mm -hmm. with a complex layout but it mm -hmm. also might be broken down to a single column thing for like a mobile phone or it might end up as a as an advertisement somewhere or it might be printed into a catalog and then maybe this layout changes completely. So what yeah. we want to do in the future is we want to make those columns configurable or like add inject column settings as well or put that in the, into the layout settings at some point where you say, okay, I can define different breakpoints for the columns. But what you would do right now is you define, um, like you have a three column layout and then you can easily um, set the CSS for those, for that three columns layout and determine the breakpoints for three columns and determine the breakpoints for two columns and for, for one column or whatever. So I think that's the way to go right now to, to introduce different breakpoints for that. I hope it nice. got clear what I wanted to say. Yeah. But it's not trivial anyways. No, it's not <laughs> trivial. We, but, but, but what what we wanted to avoid at all costs is to build yet another um, HTML builder or like a layout yes. tool yeah. that pretends to solve all the layout issues in the world. Um, and that gives you all the flexibility with every little pixel that you want to move around and margins and uh, what whatnot. Because I think this is not the right approach. The approach should be, as abstracted as possible, but there is a certain kind of level where we have to give this um, this visual approach to it, because otherwise you end up with uh, 
lists and sub uh, nested um, fields, as I said before, where the editing experience is just terrible. So you have to have mm -hmm. like a balance between storing it in a structured way, but still making it nice to edit and work with. Great. <clears throat> Here's one question that is not answered. Uh, mm. Do layout settings support extend for recurring fields like preferences? Oh, good question. Uh, uh, I think so. I think so. <laughs> Sasha I, was asking. Sasha Bregen. I would have to try it myself. Actually, I, th I think we built everything that we do in an, an extensible, an extendable way. Mm -hmm. But I, I would have to double check. I'm, I'm honest. I think so. I mean, if it's not working, it's oh. an issue. You're going to double check and you're going to get back to Sasha. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, and then he has to write me again on Discord, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that means Sasha is someone who's like quite around. So um, Hazim is, uh, was asking, which I really liked uh, the, the, the question. Has anyone done a, a thorough course like on using Kirby, um, something as good as your YouTube channel, but more complete? I think he's th thinking of projects like how to build your first website with Kirby yeah. and one to one, like step by step course. As far as I know, there is none like this, right? Nothing like this. It, ideally, yeah. at some point, YouTube will like be the source for that from start yeah. to this. Um, but I could certainly think of uh, something like a complete course where the Kirby aspect, uh, the, the, the YouTube aspects that you cover bit by bit are in a more complete um, structure where, where you've got like one real example of yeah. a, an example website when you say like, as for example, like the, the, the website David mentioned, I'm a, a running trainer and I have my uh, courses and blah, blah, blah. So how would I build this? So and people could we, then abstract their, their, their projects from that. I mean, I would love if someone else would just create such a course. Um, the, yes. the, the, the idea with the YouTube channel was to provide that step by step. Um, there has been, I, I managed to um, get into quite a regular schedule um, like a two, two, two months ago, but mm -hmm. then um, it had to to stop at a point where we had to focus on on the on the release but i plan yes. to, to get back to that schedule so i really enjoyed making those videos but i think it's just going to be like an ongoing effort to make it more complete and create new um, videos new tutorials over and over again but i mean those videos have been really great there's has been the feedback has been amazing and um, i can see why um, it's such a better way to learn and for many for many people it's a more visual way it's a more um uh, yeah uh, a more interactive way in, in a certain kind because you can kind kind of jump to the parts that you're interested in or you can like watch a video whenever you feel like um, motivated you can uh, watch it on the couch it's something that you probably don't do with the um, with the docs no. So I, I really like the channel and I really want to fill it up with more content. And I'm going to go back to that as soon as the, like the stress with the release totally. of Christmas is over. And I think it's a totally uh, valid question because um, the docs are great. The docs are a really good point, but you know, sometimes it is learning the vocabulary vocabulary to find th certain things that yeah. are used for Kirby and you don't have the vocabulary yet. You just want to like build your first or one of the first projects with, with Kirby. Mm -hmm. And then oftentimes it is great to have some kind of like example projects where someone just guides you through this and then you learn the vocabulary on the way to then yeah. being able to find answers in, in the docs and, and in the cookbooks, uh, for example, as well. Yeah, and it's, it's also, um, <clears throat> we discussed this just the other day on Discord, it's a structural challenge for us all the time with every little piece, uh, piece of documentation that we create. Where do mm -hmm. we put this? How do we structure this? How do we break this up? Do we put like huge articles that cover everything? Uh, or do we cross-reference stuff? Mm -hmm. What is easier to consume? Do we have, we have a huge reference that is basically just a kind of a, 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 an almanac of everything that you can find in Kirby. But then when we also have the guide and when you get introduced to a topic, you often have to jump to the reference to get like the, the details mm -hmm. about it. And this is something in a video, you can stick to a topic and then just talk about little side quests here and there. And it doesn't feel like jumping around all the time. When you move through the docs, you 
come you you um, necessarily as dog rider come to the point where you have to link people to a different page and then they leave the page and their flow of reading the docs gets disturbed but you can't just put everything into one single documentation page yeah. and there are so many places where we struggle with this and say how is it easier to consume and we never really feel like we are 100 percent there but we also often don't have the answers for it so we don't know how to do it better and so the videos help to solve this kind of problem oftentimes totally understandable uh jan frederick was asking uh, if i understand it right now kiwi now uses fields with markdown and with html I believe this will getting problem. Uh, will, this will be problematic. I guess he means with customers to understand the difference, or how can they recognize which field is Markdown allowed and which which is not. Um, so I guess the the question is like, is there like a mix now? Like, do people sometimes mm -hmm. use this and then that, and uh, yeah. uh, will it be will it lead to confusion? Maybe. I think that is a matter of how you set up the panel for your clients and making the decision with the clients. What do you would, what do they feel more comfortable with? Um, mixing Markdown and HTML, I agree. Or like the, the which, what you see is what you get editing thing. I agree that it could lead to confusion, but also the fields uh, are looking quite different and the, the, the text area is a completely different field type. Um, so I guess if you run into those issues, then you can switch the text area to um, to HTML in no time. So the good part about this is they are totally compatible. So you can just switch the mark the text area with the um, with the, with the HTML thing or with the blocks, and then it should still work. Cool. Um, so I guess it's a, a matter of upgrading step by step, or just even at Markdown. I mean, if your clients are happy with Markdown, why would you move them to something else? when yep. they don't have any issues with it. Correct. Malta was asking, is it possible to add custom marks for inline formatting to the new writer and list fields? You said yep. not yet, but planned. Not yet, yeah. Same question, yeah. Good. Uh, is it possible to set a layout section or block to draft a draft status? I guess Also not yet. It's also one well. of those features that is coming definitely. We have that for blocks, but we don't have that for layouts yet. Yeah. Cool. And then the next one by Ben is also covered already. Uh, it is about uh, the way of collecting bits for content into collection. For yeah, I replied that di I replied uh, directly to him. Um, I, I kept the example of the speaker page uh, um, short uh, intentionally mm -hmm. to to keep it simple for the demo. But of course, you can drag in content from anywhere. You could use pages for that. You could. Um, like have a speakers a list of speakers pages and then drag one of the speakers pages in there and then use the talks from that speaker to create the blog content. So all of this is possible. I just really try to keep it simple. Cool. Uh, Dion had a question, but I think Lucas and Sonia both took care of his question. Can um, I give a huge an shout out? Can I give a huge shout out to Sonia, Lucas, and Nico and Ahmed for? Just taking care of so many replies. I mean, this is so, making our life so much easier. Yeah, totally. Great. Totally, that's great. And I, I think many people in the in the chat already honored their work, uh, especially um, Sonia, who for me at least feels like the heart and soul of the forums. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, one hundred percent. Always like like easily and quickly answering any question. Yeah, not getting any stressed and uh, like not getting any like I I know how it is because I I used to run a forum together with Dasha with like yeah. twenty thousand people. Uh, in the forum and of course there's like always the same question people asking questions in the wrong category yeah. uh, people are getting nasty they have their problem they want to get it solved now because they paid for the for the blah 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 um and, i mean uh, uh, i also have a good i also have to give a, a huge shout out to the community because we yes. really really um are we, we are just blessed with how great the people are and that's we, we hardly ever have those hard times um, part of my questions would have been to speak about exactly this yeah. but i fear we don't get to this <laughs> but we are close we are close to we are closer, uh, yeah. answer other question yeah so uh, it's a lovely it's a lovely uh thread here about um something that martin was asking a, um because martin has a job interview as a php developer tomorrow mm. uh, the company only hires wordpress developers right now Oh, yeah. well, oh, but he already or um, he already uh, told uh, the people that he is using Kirby 
as the, the CMS of preference. The CEO is open for Kirby and gave him an opportunity to give a pitch about it. So wow, what's the cool. best arguments and stuff. So people, there's a long list um, of stuff that people recommended and oh, pointed nice. um, to, that, which is great to follow, follow along. Um, yeah. Oh, thank so, you so much for all the answers already. I mean, this is, this is great. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's so it's lovely. Great. And this, we haven't, we have this, um, we have this multiple times on Discord as well, on, on the forum as well, that uh, people ask a similar question. It's it, it's super interesting to me, um, like the question of um, getting over this weird kind of um, how, how do we call that in English? So yeah, like the uh, Forschungslorbeeren or, or like mm -hmm. the so a system is so deeply uh, implanted everywhere that it's just getting all the trust out, mm -hmm. even for projects where you say they never really tested it before. So we have yeah. this multiple times with agencies where they say, we want to use this, but clients approach us and say, we want to use custom, uh, system X. They never ever used it. They just heard about it and someone else recommended it or whatever. And then they have to get over this idea that they should be using that. And um, I mean, I have a hard time putting up those comparisons. I'm just really not the type of guy who is who's liking that. I, I don't want to say, ah, this system is shit because XXX and we do more, so much better than that. It's just not the way that I believe I want to run Kirby. Um, I always try to say, set them, give them like examples, set up a, a demo project, mm -hmm. Make, make it like a nice customized little uh, panel installation for them. Just give them an idea how it yeah. feels. Um, I guess, or I think our strength is that you can really customize the panel in a way that people will feel like this is my system. This is not a system built for millions of people. This is the system yes. that is completely mine. And whenever I want to extend it um, and I want to have a new idea or we have a new um, yeah, business plan or whatever, we can follow that and there's no obstacle. And I think this is the, the important part. And I have to say the, the good thing about it is that we, we get over this. I feel like the longer we are on the market, the more trust we get, the more agencies use us, the more um, freelancers use us, the more the, the community grows. The, there's we also now benefit from a certain kind of trust, but of course it's nowhere at the, at the same level as the big players. And yeah, you can always try. I mean, Martin, I, I really wish you the best for, for tomorrow. I hope you, you get it done. Um, same here. Yeah, keep my fingers crossed um, as well. So someone is asking about the stream. Usually Stay Curious cafes are not recorded because the idea is uh, to just be there live and stuff. But for, for, for things like this, for, where Bastian introduces uh, uh, new features and maybe that is like nice to have for uh, uh, people who are not able to join today. Yes, we are recording the session. It will be available later, uh, most probably on the YouTube channel of, uh, of you, Bastian Kirby, right? Yeah. I guess that's the best place to put it to. Yeah. Um, Christian was asking another uh, a good question. It is answered more or less, um, but it's, I think it's a very interesting question. Is there a central media management in Kirby? Um, there is the option so, to have one. Yes. Yes. So there's so the option to have Sonia, us. Lucas and Jan Fredrik uh, ah, yeah, answered okay. a couple of it already. Um, they said like you can put all images in into a single folder and fetch from there. Um, then Lucas said like you can customize the destination page to, uh, for uploaded files in the files yeah. section, uh, parent option. And this can be used to define a global media page. And then he points uh, Christian to the right, um, yeah, the awesome, right awesome, awesome link, stuff. which I think answered the question. Yeah. Um, ben has a question that was answered as well. Uh, caching static files was the, yeah. uh, just a, a keyword there. One, one quick, I, I don't know. Yeah, so one thing we have to cache and we use it all the time for our website as well. So you can cache um, the, the stuff on demand. So it's then cached yeah. afterwards. And there's also a super great static site plugin, site generator plugin. So if you want to use Kirby as a static site generator, that's also possible. And a third mm -hmm. option 
that's a more complex option, but you can also use it as a headless CMS and then bind it to a static site generator like 11T or whatever and feed data from Kirby to 11T and then use that to create static site. So there are basically three ways to handle that or to solve that. What's the best place to, to look out for like how to's YouTube yeah, channel? Yeah. Just yeah. to put some pressure on you, Bastian. Yeah, yeah, fine. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so, yes, this is hands up. Um, Erwin is and, uh, asking, um, are we getting YouTube tutorials, tutorials on the new features? I guess, yes, right? I mean, I hope so. There's like yeah. the, 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 um, the, the release notes page explains quite a lot already. Yeah. Um, Part of it is stuff you demonstrated today um, and the rest, I, I think, uh, yes. Yep. I mean, it um, would be really great if if people just like uh, help you producing the videos, right? And, and, uh, uh, yeah. And, th and well, a few well, things like this. You, I mean, I have to be honest. I mean, the, 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 I have a, have a problem with um, the, the speed of delivering those videos, but I actually really like producing them i hated it at the beginning and mm -hmm. so after getting a bit into the flow i'm i'm, I'm actually quite uh I yeah, could, nice. starting to like it uh the reason is that um i i don't have any client projects anymore um so like, yeah. like two years for now or something and they have always been a great way to reflect on decisions that we made and then i had to find after one after i ditched the clients I had to find like a different different ways to um, reflect on those decisions. And of course, again, community is great. We have great input. Um, the, the team is working on their projects all the time. So they have mm -hmm. great input on it. But for me personally, uh, it's great to have this um, additional uh, channel where I can um, build stuff myself, like trying to do real kind, realish kind of projects and then talk about them because that is just such an honest way of a brutal way of seeing issues. You build something and then you feel like, oh shit, this is really not cool. So if, if the YouTube video is really hard for me to produce, it's a good sign that something has to change there. So if I can't explain it properly in a YouTube video in 20 minutes, yeah. Um, yeah. then there is probably an issue with Kirby there and I have to, or we have to look at the feature again and rebuild yeah. it. Nice. But maybe I guess like just from the sheer amount of things you sh you could should and mm -hmm. maybe want to produce that's like just like yeah, yeah. honestly it's like so much um, that maybe like if there is someone in the community who's able to and wants to and enjoys and make has the, I mean I think to be honest uh, it might sound a bit yeah I don't know cheeky but um, <laughs> I I'd certainly I certainly want to to um, what do you say, like, to quality check all yeah. those things that go up on, on the YouTube channel. But, um, well, wh why not? Um, Levent is asking, do you have a plan to come to Turkey? I don't know actually what he or um, she means. Um, like us yeah, two, uh, Bastian and I, like, we, we, why not? I mean, invite us. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to. I mean, that's the kind of the thing we, we haven't been speaking about so much, but th th I wrote it on Discord today that I, uh, when I thank the team for all their work. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's weird. I mean, I, I don't think that many people know that, but we hardly get to see each other. So, and par parts of the team haven't even met at all. So the conference mm -hmm. was canceled last year and that would have been yeah. a chance for most of the team to also finally meet for the first time I have met. Uh, everyone here in Germany, but I haven't met Ahmed so far. So I would love to to visit him in, in Istanbul or to yeah. get him over to Germany. I mean, right now, all those plans are no. uh, somewhere in the stars anywhere. Uh, anyway, yep. but um, I, I really hope so that we can get this done at some point and get the conference back and then get him here and all meet and all have a good time. So then Jason was asking, will you ever demonstrate um how powerful kirby is with databases actually um, it depends on what you mean with that i mean you can combine it with databases and show virtual uh, connect it with virtual pages and there is a lot to get from that but um you can't just swap out the file system with uh, databases so that's not possible right now yeah um, is there any material been... online there 
that it has been requested. Can... I mean, for the virtual pages, there is document there is documentation out there. Mm -hmm. um, but this is something we still need to explore further. Uh, we, we don't focus on this 100% all the time or not even all the time. I mean, this is not like our top priority. We try mm -hmm. to be a really, really, really good file based system without databases yep. at first. And then this is something as an option that is always there, but not perfectly solved. So Maurice is asking, are there any plans to enable Kirby to be used as a handler CMS? Well, you can already. Um, yeah, you can already, already. 100%. Yeah, yeah, of course. Markus so Denhoff, uh, for example, uh, uh, led him to uh, uh, to, uh, to a link where that is explained. Yeah. Uh, and Thomas I mean, Dahm um, is, uh, is already asking, so I could use Google Sheets as a database as well uh, um, with this uh, uh, KQL. And then uh, Marco said, like, never tried that, but it could uh, or it should work. Yes. Yeah, so. it should work. So with virtual pages, you could do that. You probably need to cache the results, but you, you can mm -hmm. do that. Good. And then we are at the end. And John Hicks is asking the one and only and very important question. <laughs> yeah. Are I love there it. any plans for Zootool integration, <laughs> Bastian? Yeah. Oh, my God. I would love that. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I probably need to explain to some what that is. So the, the, the project before Kirby. So when I um, studied design, um, mm -hmm. I got into development long before that. But then I studied design. And for my bachelor thesis, I was completely free to do whatever I wanted, basically, at our university. It was quite liberal back there. And so my idea was that I wanted to build a visual bookmarking tool. And this is that what this is what I built for my bachelor thesis in 2007, I think, or yeah. And then, um, and then my professor at that time was so um, excited about it that he said, oh, "I'm angel. I'm going to angel invest into that. Let's build a company together. Let's make a visual bookmark tool." And then um, I, <laughs> I well, I, I guess I shouldn't talk about that openly. Uh, Never mind. It's a long time ago. So, and, and then I, uh, I took my master's degree at the same university, and I, he was my professor. And <laughs> so I built my master in the, my master thesis. I built the next version of Zootool there, and I guess it's I would call a um, conflict of interests there. Um, but <laughs> as I said, long time ago. And then, so, and <coughs> this is the, the 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 story how Zootool was born. So it was a visual bookmark tool where you could collect images and videos and all kinds of stuff from all over the the, uh, the web. Ba pretty much like what Pinterest is nowadays, kind of, uh, but in a more appish way. So it was it, it felt more like an iPhoto kind of thing for for yeah. those bookmarks. You could organize them in different collections and tag them and stuff. And John was one of our first. Uh, yeah, big users who really put a lot of stuff actually in there. And um, uh, yeah, Zootool was a great journey, a great experience story, but also didn't end that well. So it ran for seven years, I think, until 2014. That's another yeah. show, Bastian. That's yeah, another show. 100,000 users, and then we had to shut it down, and it was not very successful financially. <laughs> but it was a lot of experience that also kind of led to Kirby in the end. A lot of good learning. Yeah, one hundred percent. The hard way. <laughs> the hard, the very hard way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got a last uh, last minute drop in with a question. Yeah. Interesting question. Also, Julian um, is asking. Some agencies I work with fear to switch to Kirby sometimes because they are concerned by the financial sustainability mm -hmm. of the company, like Kirby. Personal, uh, personally, as a user from the very first version, I feel that Kirby seems more and more major. And it's see uh, uh, and seeing the community growing is very uh, very reassuring. Yeah, enough for 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 him. But um, without numbers, how is it going for you and the team? I mean, that's something I had here as well, like uh, financials and stuff, and how how this situation is. How do you like cope yeah. uh, against like the big players in the market? Um, so it's a good question. Um, but I I fear it will like in if we really go into details, also like. Uh, uh, take too long for 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 the time we are already uh, uh yeah it's already, already have. long past i, yeah, I tried so to that, answer that. it quickly um and I, I i feel bad about it because this year has been so shitty for so many people and um you included mark and um th this year has been really good for us to be honest um 
I guess because a lot of people were forced, a lot of companies were forced to move their presentation, their companies, their strategies to the web. I don't know. It, it, it looked grim in the beginning when the lo first lockdown started and a lot of people had, were in mm -hmm. unsecure situations and didn't know where, where it would go to. But we have been gr growing actually quite a lot this year. And um, so I, I, I can't complain. I mean, there is so much trust that we get from our community. And I can see this in such a sale that is running right now where people just put lots and lots of money into new um, new licenses for the next month. And yeah. um, this is, we, we, I, I always tried to be fair with the pricing model and we probably could squeeze I know. a lot more out of this. Um, but this is not the concept. We want to be at a balance between or at a point where it's interesting for freelancers and for smaller companies as well to use it and not just for enterprise businesses to use it um, with a like a ridiculous license price where we probably just need to sell a couple licenses a year and be good. Um, from, so from a financial situation, we, we really can't complain. It's getting better every year. Mm -hmm. um, it's difficult that, to grow as a business, as a small business with a one, with one full-time employee and freelancers to more full-time employees. That's kind of a big step, um, a mm -hmm. big step from that position that we could, right now I, I could instantly say, okay, we have two full-time employees. That would be absolutely no problem, but it would be difficult um, to give, it's, I, can't, I don't want to kick out the others. And I also mm -hmm. can't because it, we need all those different positions. We have all those multiple heads on and those heads are super needed. So as a small t uh, company, um, uh, the ideal situation would be just hiring everybody full time, but everybody else also has their own projects and they are happy with that, their situations and not, not necessarily interested in having a full time Kirby position. So mm -hmm. I think we can't really complain right now. So the next big step would be adding more full time employees, but that would also increase the complexity quite a lot um, in terms of organization and um, how we yeah, yeah. move on. So I think I, I, I'm quite happy with the situation right now. I'd yeah, I mean, right again, there, there, I, I can understand the the uh, the kind of like, um, yeah, the consideration of like someone who sees you as a as one person show uh, to run Kirby, not knowing that there is people involved, uh, but Bastian is the one who's like the name for Kirby. And then uh, you think like, what if Bastian just decides, well, I, I, I just lost well, interest in Kirby or I don't want to, or a bus hits you. And then, you know, how do people make sure that their, their projects are, are still being taken care of or the yeah. development of Kirby in that case, you know what I mean? So yeah, uh, one hundred percent. situations. I, and I, I totally get those, those um, concerns. And that's why I also don't want to have those head that head on all the time there, the, mm -hmm. the rest of the team is doing so much work on this and has so much influence on on everything like i mean you could just look look at the chat how much um, answers have been replied by the others how much how many yeah. people um give constant feedback about how helpful sonia was to them how helpful the others were with uh, the github issues and the, the, the requests on, on discord i couldn't do it without them and there's no chance it's this is this is no this is so far away from a one-man show it couldn't be mm -hmm. further away from it um and uh, yeah, I, I think the, the biggest problem for us is really just the uncertainty of the future that is always there and overcoming like that next step where you say, okay, oh, doesn't really matter. The next um, full-time employee is no problem. And then mm -hmm. we can still have all the freelancers helping us out and then step-by-step step adding next to freelancers. But we are getting very close to that. And so that's what, what makes me feel comfortable. But again, I cannot, I cannot tell the future. I'm, I'm a very cautious person. And I think that is a, a plus for Kirby though. Um, I personally want to run this for as long as I can. I, I mm -hmm. stand up every morning, get super excited about work. 
And this is at the point where I want to be the rest of yeah, my working life, if it's somehow possible. I don't know if it's, it will be with Kirby forever and ever. I don't want to say that because it's unrealistic, but right now I get excited and motivated every day. And as long as this uh, sticks true, I will try everything that this is going to go on um, stable and reliable and that you can just have full confidence in us as a, as a system. And the community is going, growing bigger and more active and the team is growing bigger and more active. And it also means there are more people who could take over whenever I just fall over and stop doing stuff. Well, what a great closing, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, again, I, I got a couple of things that I, as topics, had lined up in case there were no questions, but I think um, there were enough questions. Yeah. Um, if anyone is interested in a show where we do exactly what we did for the last one and a half hours or like one and a bit more hours um, chatting about Kirby and the product and the business behind it and the community and struggles and how Bastian is able to manage like to take care of a family with two kids, a wife and a house and working on Kirby. I think there's like so many things that come to my head when if I think of a product like yours and like the connected uh, connectivity for, uh, between you and the product. Uh, I certainly think that's like super interesting. Um, the direction all this goes into um, the, the questions and stuff. So if there is any interest, maybe we could just meet for a brief chat and invite people to join us and uh, have yeah. a drink with us. And we, we just, we, we should just like take cameras with us every time we meet in my kitchen or in, no, in the Oh God, this wouldn't whatever. be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, okay. But first, like my... first we, would, we would have need, we wish we should meet again. And that is like, yeah, the most difficult part right now, right? We will, I'm confident, will. if not. Yeah. No, we will definitely. And with this, I say thank you so, so much, Basti. That was a great pleasure, really. I, so I enjoyed much, it. Um, yeah, no, me too. I hope the nearly 170 uh, participants enjoyed this as well, the evening. Ah, blown away. Um, mean, 70, there were still 70 left. I mean, this is crazy. Yes. And those After 70 those get, the, get the absolute pleasure of like listening to some more Toby awesomeness now. Yeah. Uh, while we gonna go grab another drink and let fade out the day i need yeah. to prepare a treasure hunt for my daughter who's turning eight tomorrow yeah. that's some stuff to do right now uh basti again thank you so much we're gonna everyone. chat anyways thanks everybody for joining us today 